Good morning, friends. We are going to start today's paper presentation session. Today, twenty seventh June two thousand and twenty, the remaining papers are going to be presented. Those who want to present their papers and listed. still their papers are not displayed or streamed please email me on b k o m s o n o n e at chintamani.edu.in let me start the session now This is a simulation from Arts Commons and Science College Singapore. District Maharashtra State. Today's presentation topic is challenges in front of MSMEs during and after lockdown in India. Empirical study. Let's start with introduction. The micro, small, and medium enterprises sector has emerged. as highly vibrant and dynamic sector of the indian economy over the last 5 years it contributes significantly in the economy and social development of the country by fostering entrepreneurship and generating largest employment opportunities at completely lower capital cost next only on agriculture msmes are complementary to large industries in ancillary units and this sector contribute contributes significantly in the inclusive industrial development of country the msmes are widening their domain across sector of the economy producing diverse range of products and services to meet demands of domestic as well as global markets ministry of micro small and medium enterprises and regions a progressive msme sector by promoting growth and development of their sector including khari village and coal industries in cooperation with concerned ministries or departments state government of state government and other stakeholders through providing support to existing enterprises adopting cutting ministry of state of micro small and medium the research paper paper is designed my objective is to collect knowledge about covid-19 pandemic virus to study impact of corona disease on micro small and medium enterprises in india to know the problem of msme during the during and after lockdown impact of covid-19 on msmes is collapsing demand and access to liquidity another one is accessing inputs and managing inventory managing the work environment policy uncertainty and disrupted supply chain policy accessing emergency support and the recommendation is rebuild the ecosystem think Think value chain and alliances. Focus on finance. Take to social media and amplify messages. Take order online and deliver personally or sold. Take help of experts. Auto marketing. Borrow or find the loans. Thank you. Uh, good morning to all of you. Uh, I am Dr. Abdul Rahman from Government PG College, Sambal. I want to present my paper and. 
entitled as COVID-19 and its impact on Indian economy. Uh, today, we are living in a most dangerous atmosphere where there is a fear of coronavirus everywhere. It is very critical time for the entire world to save humanity. Uh, till now, no vaccine has been developed in the world to cure for COVID-19, but efforts are continuing at national and international level to cope this situation. It is also very difficult to satisfy the day-to-day -day necessities of life for a lower and middle income group who have lost their jobs or work due to lockdown process because a large number of industrial or business units have been closed temporarily. This pandemic of COVID-19 at a large extent has created various socio-economic issues and challenges for the societies and economies globally. Therefore, it is the necessity of time to counter this pandemic this pandemic by collective efforts and remove or reduce its negative impact on the societies and economy. Uh, various sectors of the economy as agriculture, industry, manufacturing sector, service sectors have been affected badly. Uh, the pandemic of COVID-19 has affected humanity mentally and physically at a large extent in every walk of life. Most of the companies or industries have suspended their activities or reduced their operations significantly. More than 45% uh, household across the country have reported less income as compared to previous year. Uh, around 14 crores Indian have lost their employment during the lockdown. Uh, the Indian economy was expected to loss over 32,000 crore every day during the first 21 days of lockdown. Uh, the government has also taken various measures to tackle the about situations, uh, to tackle about uh, problems. Uh, now, in conclusion, uh, uh, COVID-19 has affected each and every aspect of our lives, uh, either positively or negatively. No vaccine or uh, treatment has been discovered till now to face this problem. So it will be better to adopt preventive and safety measures for living with it. As it is pandemic, collaborative and coordinated efforts are urgently required to control the spread and uh, reduce its impact globally. To make the Indian economy self-reliant, the produ production of essential commodities should be at local level and tax concessions should be provided to such industries or units. Agriculture and allied sectors should be provided top priority in budget and strategic planning. The economic decisions should be taken after taking advices of an expert team of senior economists and after considering the socio-economic impact of these decisions. Education removes the darkness of the society. Therefore, the long-term investment in education and health sector is necessary to make the people of nation educated and healthy. By collecting uh, a comprehensive data of migrant labor or workers, the government should try to provide employment to them at local level. The government should continue to help farmers. Financial packages certainly would provide necessary support to agriculture sector to get back on the way of recovery. The government should provide necessary supports to the startup and other, and other industries producing basic necessities of life. The, law, uh, the raw materials or the products which we are importing from foreign countries, we should try to search uh, raw materials and resources available and manufacture those products within the country. All the responsible citizens must follow the principles of equity, honesty, and justice, and should provide their contributions to make the country corruption-free, safe, healthy, and self-reliant. Thank you. Myself, Sanjay Kumar, MPL scholar, Dr. Sivira Ramon University, Bilaspur, presentation on role of digital education system during and post-COVID-19. Introduction the vitrifying and serve impact of COVID-19 has shaken the world to its core core. Second point, government around the world have temporarily closed educational institutions in an attempt to contain the spread of the COVID-19. Number three, in India to the government has a part of nationwide lockdown, has closed all education institutions as the consequences of which uh, which learners ran, uh, ranging from school going children to post graduate students are affected. India, the largest education system in the world, 
Number one, the country has more than 1.4 million schools. Number two, our 227 million students enroll it. And number three, more than 36,000 higher education institutes. Number four, India has one of the largest higher education system in the world. Uh, promotion of e-learning. Nationwide closures are impacting our 91% of the world's students' population. A complete revolution in the way we learn today has been brought about of technology. E-students get in contact with the world-class education, which is not easy to impact by the traditional white chalk, white chalk and blackboard methods of teaching. Uh, online distant learning program give a great opportunity to enable high quality learning with the help of internet connectivity. Uh, challenging in digital learning. Dig digital learning has many advantages in itself, like digital learning has no physical boundaries, it has more learning engagement experience rather than the traditional learning. It is also cost effective as students get to learn in the confines of their comfort zone. Global online education has made with some success. In the case of India, we still have a long way to go before digital learning is seen as mainstream education because students, students live in urban areas have the facility to uh, option uh, for digital education. However, rural area students do not have the required infrastructure nor are financially strong to enable the resources required for digital education. Conclusions. Due to the outbreak of the COVID-19, the world from home WFH culture in booming in India, not only education institutes in India have opted for an online platform like Zoom app, WhatsApp to stay connected with their students who are learning from their homes. COVID-19 outbreak has boosted the e-learning process abruptly in India. Good afternoon, one and all. Effect of today's my oral presentation topic is effect of land degradation on and biodiversity in Nagpur city. I am Dr. Seema Kuru, Department of Zoology, Shivaji Science College, Nagpur. Topic. This topic is very important topic where ants are important in below ground processes through the alteration of physical and chemical environment and through their effects on plant and microorganism. But today, this scenario is totally different where the urban area shows maximum degradation of lands and ultimately these processes degrade the nesting habitat of ants. So here the abstract shows important of ants in biogeochemical processes and pedological processes. Here introduction is related to the study where integrated landscape approach to promote research in human modified landscape affects directly on the dynamics and conservation of biodiversity of ants. Here Ants are studied where ant fauna affects directly on the soil pedological processes. Here I have studied three important subfamilies, Dolichidarini, Mirmicini, and Formicini. Among these ant species, some genera are very important and observed in rural and urban area. Here, this study related to the rural study where maximum soil nutrients in as ant nest mound soil shows maximum concentration while in urban area these concentration of soil micronutrient is decreasing material and method here experimental design is very simple i have chosen 
two different areas in rural areas and urban areas where the soil sample of ant mound soil collected and processed in the laboratory of college these are the pictorial evidences where ant mound soil in rural areas shows high peak mounds while in urban areas it is somewhat sandy and due to land degradation it shows less micro nutrients this is the experimental setup now result and discussion survey of present study observed three ant genera where subfamily milmicini dolichidaeidae formicini these are important subfamilies observed in both the urban and rural area while in rural area these species are highly species variants or biodiverse or rich species richness is maximum in rural areas as compared to urban area here i have chose u1 that means the soil sample collected from urban areas and r1 means soil sample collected from rural areas this is the tabulated form of soil sampling where ph nitrogen concentration phosphorus concentration sulfur concentration potassium and carbon concentration in three different species variable shows variability while in control areas it is as compared to the experimental plot it is less while in rural areas the concentration of these micronutrient is maximum as compared to urban areas due to land degradation now this is the graphical representation where all this graph and bar graph shows maximum concentration and peak level of the concentration in the rural and urban areas no conclusion conclusion shows that due to the climatic changes land degradation and concreting in urban areas it is the result that the ant nest habitat gets degraded or less as compared to rural areas where maximum vegetation green vegetation plant dynamics species richness of plants observed in rural areas as compared to urban areas so this degradation of land in urban areas directly affect on the population or population and biodiversity of ant species so if you um, if uh, the people today the people should know about the importance of ant as a biological engineer not only engineer but ant play important role in socio economic uh, development of agriculture field also thank you very much namaste this is precious sipandi the assistant professor of west bengal india today i am going to present on the topic emerging ethical issues from the worldwide pandemic covid 19 so let me share my screen um, currently the whole world is facing the immense crisis caused by the unprecedented pandemic coronavirus disease Now, the, each pandemic with its unique features raises distinct ethical issues, and the whole scenario alters according to its present novel features. In this scenario, the infection of COVID-19 is spread more easily and more quickly than any other infectious disease till now. Although the mortality rate caused by this disease is lower than SARS and Ebola, its fatality comes from this highly contagious nature. Second. A coronavirus infected person may remain normal after two weeks without any sign of infection, and consequently, the person becomes the silent carrier of this infection and will infect more people without being aware of this infection. Now, here I will differentiate and analyze the ethical issues of this scenario from three different perspectives. Firstly, the ethical issues emerge from the imposition of preventive measures. 
Here, social distancing, travel restriction, and covering face with masks have been implemented by WHO along with the previous implementation of isolation for the sake and quarantine by public health authorities in this scenario to slow down the community spread. Since an infected patient is able to spread the virus among three people at a time, the spread will be devastating and beyond control if the infected person joins in large social gathering or visits any crowded places. Although the measures have been taken here by anticipating the common good for the sake of community welfare, here the ethical issues emerges because it conflicts with the uh, individual's autonomous free will and liberty. Since these quick mandatory rules for public health have been executed without taking informed consent into consideration due to lack of time and severity of the emergency. Secondly, since humans are the social species, it is indeed socially, physically, and mentally disturbing to maintain social distance. Again, it is problematic to suddenly adopt the new normal of greeting friends from distance. Now, uh, here I'm going to suggest some ethical solutions to deal with this problem. Firstly, the common good approach, which comes from Aristotle, emphasizes the common conditions that are important to the welfare for everyone. This approach evokes the interconnected social relations of a community and one member's moral obligation to others for the common good. From this standpoint, every individual, despite their autonomous free will, should consider restrictions of their public movements and reasonable and fear if these free movements pose serious significant threat to the whole government. Secondly, according to Kant, self-preservation is a universal duty for every rational being. It is one's duty to protect oneself and adapt whatever measures are required to promote the interest of self-protection. Another approach is altruistic in nature, which invokes one's benevolent duty towards others. From an altruistic approach, everyone in a society has a duty towards others. This duty has two aspects. Firstly, by avoiding harm to others that is non-maleficious, and secondly, by promoting good for others that is beneficial. From this approach, one should maintain social distancing and avoid, avoid harm to others. And in this way, one can promote the good for all by stopping the virus transmission. We should sacrifice our limited pressure to organize or attend social gatherings or visit crowded places, not only to protect our own self, but also to protect others. So this, this approach is more convincing as social being. Again, uh, since we are the social species, it is difficult to adopt social distancing. Maybe it would be easier to adopt the term physical distancing rather than social distancing. Since here the goal is not to separate one individual from the society or secluded from the society. Uh, however, it, it, the goal is to separate individuals physically from each other. And the physical distancing actually promotes the virtue of solidarity. The virtue of solidarity holds a deeper sense of unity while promoting the commitment to something which is bigger and beyond. By cultivating the virtue of solidarity, one can reorient one's individual's free will and commit oneself onto something which will promote and the common good. And in this way, everyone, despite their mere individual differences, fights unitedly against the deadly virus. Again, COVID-19 makes a situation which compels us to cover our mouth, uh, face by masks to avoid transmission of the virus. However, this measure will go against one's individual's right of free choice. Now, uh, we need to think that the virus transmits through the droplets by some involuntary reflexive activities such as coughing or sneezing, where we are not often ready to cover our face with hands or tissues. This practice is always involuntary harmful to others. So when the right to life confronts with the right of free choices, such as uncover the faces or attend social gathering, the right of life subordinates are the right. Secondly, uh, the moral dilemmas of the physicians and healthcare workers, the huge demands 
leads to high scarcity of medical equipment and resources during emergency. This situation raises the question of justice and pushes healthcare workers into the moral dilemma on how to share limited goods equally and fairly. Here, in this uh, emergency uh, situation, public health workers are adopting triage method to maintain the fair allocation of the limited equipment as much as possible. Treat method is initially used in World War to determine the impact and urgency of the wounds of the soldiers and make a quick decision regarding to whom to treat first. Although the impact is similar to a war, a pandemic outbreak is different because it is primarily clinical emergency situation. To maintain justice in this healthcare emergency, here we should make prioritization based on clinical relevance, but not based on utilitarian assessment since the ethical and medical boards have no authority to decide the value of life years based on utilitarian assessments on who will give a greater contribution to society when the pandemic is over. Because everyone have, has their contribution for their society, even the old and the young, irrespective of this age. Now, the physician has to take the crucial decision by determining the life expectancy of patients and thereby choose whom they, sh uh, they should provide the treatment to by removing it from a patient who is not at all improving or has the very minimal chance to respond. This decision goes against the principle of non malfeasance which prescribes that even if uh, the doctor cannot do any better, do not do any worse. However, they have to take this crucial decision to cure other patients who might have chance to recover. Since in this uh, crisis period, there are huge number of patients that are waiting for the ICU beds or the uh, life, uh, life supporting patients. So, so they, they should take this crucial decision. And justice requires that medical judgment for prioritization should be solely based on clinical life expectancy, regardless of the patient's age, wealth, power, or any other less determining clinical factors. Now I'm coming to my final uh, aspect, that is ethical confrontation from the, pub, uh, from the administrative public workers and policymakers. Yeah, the role of administrative public workers and policymakers is to recognize the moral values in the decision making within the ethically challenging situation when the usual approved behaviors are dangerous to others. Now, for the effective implementation of prevention measures and other healthcare policies, the administration should promote those strategies which are accountable, transparent, and trustworthy. For example, the preventive measures like social distancing, self-isolation and quarantine should be implemented for all without any discrimination of power, wealth and social status. Now, transparent communication also includes the use of evidence-based and data-driven communication. The transparent, publicly informed, well-communicated measures can develop public trust, reduce the panic and result in the acceptance of individual restrictions for the rest of the common. Thus, to execute an effective policy, transparency, honesty, and trustworthiness are the keys which build the bridge of trust between administration, public health authorities, and people in general. Now, there is an interchangeable relation between justice and infectious disease. This pandemic has exposed the deeper injustice of the global social structure since it brings into surface a huge deprivation and unfair distribution of basic needs, especially to the few people of the developing countries like India. It is quite difficult here to maintain the social distancing and long-term policy for a long time because uh, here the almost uh, the largest poor here, uh, which is the largest poor population and most of the people in India um, live on their daily basic wages. Here, most of the inhabitants are susceptible to infection due to poor nutrition, polluted waters, clouded living areas, clouded living conditions, poor education, lack of awareness, lack of access to basic medicine. These factors lead the poor people of the developing countries to be more prone to the infection. So for an effective implementation of 
social distancing in the countries like India, administration of each state can determine the population of each area which falls under below poverty level. And an emergency fund should be invested to provide the basic nutrition of this group. The miserable condition of the migrant workers also uh, portrays the acute disharmony and injustice of the social structure of India. So the government should identify the migrant workers of every state and take the immediate initiatives to provide them food, shelter, and other emergency needs. Now, uh, finally, I want I would like to conclude that the worldwide pandemic, in one hand, uncovers a huge injustice within global social structure, and on the other hand, makes us to realize ourselves again as a member of one single community. Since the risk is common, we should practice and encourage the virtue of collaboration, benevolence, and solidarity. This pattern situation also teaches us that we need to move together, interconnectedly, collaboratively, benevolently, and by promoting global justice, by providing the kind access to the most needy and vulnerable ones among the poor people of developing countries and all over the world. Thus, by our united effort and virtuous coming to teamwork, we can defeat the common enemy of the entire human race, that is the deadly coronavirus. Thank you so much. Stay, stay safe and healthy. Namaskar to all. This is Vishal Chandrasekhar Belure, Assistant Professor and HOD of Economics, Raju Gandhi Mahavidale Mutkhed, District Nanded. State Maharashtra. Here I am going to present my research paper on the topic of the impact of COVID-19 on the migrant workers in India. According to Oxford Dictionary of Economics, migration means movement of people between regions of countries it may be temporary with the intention of returning in the future or permanent or migrants may not have decided between these alternatives at the time of migration. Migration is affected by many pull and push factors. As per the census 2011, the total number of migrants in India is 45. 36 crore, which stood 37% of country's population. According to economic survey of 2016, there are roughly more than 10 crores migrant workforce in India, comprising various states. Most of the migrant laborers in the country come from states like Uttar Pradesh, Bihar, West Bengal, Rajasthan, and Madhya Pradesh. COVID-19 outbreak and the subsequent lockdown situation imposed by center and state governments have opened the Pandora's box for migrant workers. Migrant workers comprise the daily wage laborers working in the manufacturing and construction industries. They mostly come from rural areas of the country. Many of them had no savings and lived in factory dormitories or tiny rented rooms. During the lockdown period with no income, no work and no transportation facility, migrant workers were seen to return to their native places by merely walking or bicycling hundreds of or sometimes thousands of kilometers. In this study, it is observed that migrant workers in India have faced the following unprecedented multiple hardships during the corona pandemic and announcement of an unplanned lockdown period. Number one, unemployment. Number two, no income. Number three, hunger and starvation. Number four, social biasness. Number five, police brutality. Number six, depression and suicides. 
नंबर सेवन रोड एंड रेल एक्सीडेंट्स नंबर एट इलनेस एंड डिनायल ऑफ मेडिकल केयर नंबर नाइन बर्डन ऑन रूरल इकोनॉमी एक्सेट्रा सो दिस इज द थीम ऑफ माय रिसर्च पेपर थैंक यू वेरी मच गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल ऑफ यू आई एम मिस्टर गणेश सुरजुसे असिस्टेंट प्रोफेसर एंड एच ऑफ द डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इंग्लिश ऑफ चिंतामणि महाविद्यालय गोगोस and i am presenting my research paper in international e conference this is international conference which is organized by chintamani college of commerce and chintamani group with collaboration of mahila mahavidyalay amravati this is two day interdisciplinary international e conference on the subject of impact of covid 19 on various areas of global economy science and humanity the subject of my research in this particular conference that odd and even psychological effect among country people of disaster present reality of covid 19 corona has made the powerful impact on country people and my research is focus the psychological impact of corona on women hello psychological impact of corona on student impact of corona on jobless people impact of corona on children and homeless people so yeah it's only this is the my topic now i am going to see that the key word of my research that the key word of my research is psychological impact mental health covid 19 outbreak lockdown and public health crisis so i am going the first point of my research that is the psychological effect of corona on women's mental health corona virus has made terrible impact on women's mental health this is especially focus on women's psychological condition during the lockdown and quarantine during the lockdown lot of the women are facing in the anxiety stress and psychological burden this is the case created by the corona on the mental health of women the next important point that psychological impact on student during the covid 19 outbreak during the corona that school colleges and university are closed and there are lot of fake news on the social media that whether they will conduct the exam or not you and most of the student don't have the smartphone to connect the online classes some of the teacher also don't have the knowledge how to conduct the online classes so during the corona we cannot see the proper teaching in the uh, in education system so this is the main important reason that it is the impact on uh, student uh, it impacts the student burden the next important point is that the psychological impact on jobless people there are large number of people we can see who don't have the job so there is a insecurity of financial uh, financial problem there is a stress and anxiety about their family so jobless people also facing the anxiety and stress uh, during the covid 19 period then the uh, next important point that the uh, impact of corona on children behavior children don't have the habit to play within house and you and we cannot allow them to play outdoor game so uh, they are not uh, giving the proper behavior because they uh, we can find the psychological impact on their uh, children behavior the next important point that the psychological impact on among jobless people we always saying that the stay at home stay at home but some people don't have the home they are homeless so uh, they are facing the anxiety uh, and uh, insecurity about their life because the viral is wandering everywhere so this is the uh, my research paper now i am going to conclude this is this study highlights that how covid 19 made the powerful uh, impact on the psychological side of the people there are large number of people in the world who are living in lockdown and this isolation and create the psychological burden so the outbreak of corona is leading the health problem and such anxiety stress uh, depression insomnia and worries about life so i am very much thankful of the organizer for giving me such kind of opportunity to present my research paper in this international e conference thank you thank you very much
Hello everyone, this is Dr. Manisha Jaiswal, Assistant Professor in the Department of Commerce, Dollar Trump College. Today I'm going to present paper on the topic impact of COVID-19 on textile and apparel industry of India. The textile and apparel industry is one of the oldest industries that has witnessed numerous development over the years. It contributes to 0.3% of India's GDP. It is the second largest employer in the country, providing employment to over 105 million people and own around 40 uh, US billion dollar apart from substantial revenue under GST and other taxes. It contributes 14% of the industrial production. It comes for 14% of world's total production of textile fiber and yarn and contributes 12% of the country's export earning. Also provides 3% of the world market share in no majorly handling. India is the largest producer of jute in the world, second largest producer of silk, polyester and fiber, third largest producer of cotton, fourth largest producer of textile and garment, and fifth largest producer in synthetic fiber and yarn. The Indian apparel sector is the world's fourth largest producer of textile and garments and it's not just a foreign exchange owner but an employment group industry employing 12.9 million people today, the textile and apparel market has become a vital contributor to the Indian economy. FDI in the textile and apparel industry has increased to 3.1 US billion dollar during the year 2018-19. The Indian textile and apparel industry has been partly classified into two segments. First, the unorganized sector consisting of handloom, handicraft and sericulture, which are operated on small scale practicing traditional tools and methods. And the second is the organized sector, which uh, applies modern machinery and techniques, high cost products and cost pressure on the value chain, making yarn, fabric and apparel exports less competitive. India stands fifth largest in the world with an export turnover of 37.11 US billion dollar. India is using intensive technology for mass production of textile products, spinning, weaving, processing, and apparel. The Indian textile and apparel market is estimated at 140 US billion dollar in 2018-19, which comprise 100 US billion dollar for domestic market and plus 40 US billion dollar uh, constitute export from India. Apparel or ready-made garment is the largest segment within Indian textile and apparel market, which accounts nearly three-fourths of the domestic market and approximately half of the total textile and apparel industry. Growth in the middle and lower middle class with rising disposable income has led to continuously demand for textile and apparel industry and this growth is expected to continue in the future and Indian domestic textile and apparel market is estimated to reach at 220 US billion by the year 2025-26 growing at a CHER of 12 percent. As far as Indian textiles and apparel exports are concerned, India ranked second in textile exports with 6% of global share. It ranked fifth in the apparel exports with 4% of global share. In overall positioning, India holds second position with total 5% of global share in export of textile and apparel exports have grown to uh, 39 US billion dollar the year 2018-19 and it is expected to reach at 70 US billion dollar by the year 2025-26. The outbreak of coronavirus epidemic that has taken over the world has badly hit it. the textile and apparel industry of India as well, with most of the regions in the country resorting to lockdown and social distancing. The nationwide lockdown has temporary closure of factories. The domestic textile and apparel have come to a halt. Employment has been affected due to limited demand in both domestic and international market. The industry survives on consumer demand and with COVID-19 pandemic, there is no demand for products that are not in the list of necessities. The result has been partial or complete shutdown of the thousands of the factories. Millions of factory workers have been sent home, often without legal mandate pay 
or compensation sudden layoff has affected thousands of families who are dependent on the industry for livelihood this production loss and the return of labor will take time to bring back the normalcy in this industry domestic stores are facing an inventory build up due to the apparel sources for the upcoming summer season further the domestic prices could be negative Negatively impacted if exporters dump their inventories in the domestic market, leading to even reducing margins. If the current scenario persists over the next few months, the domestic retail market would also be impacted significantly. Tourists account for about twenty percent of the garment sales, and yes, sales will definitely take line because of the stoppage of tourism industry. Also, apparel market. report 84% drop in may sales as both demand and supply chain are stopped the domestic apparel business saw zero production of regular products in the last quarter of may however 22% of the garment factories are operational currently as they have forced shifted their focus from traditional manufacturing to manufacturing of masks and other ppe products the sector has been grappling with profit issues due to sharp decline in domestic demand exports etc and these issues are only look to get aggravated further with the current crisis the global covid-19 pandemic had devastating impact on global government supply chain and the situation will get further worse before it get better the textile export industry has pegged the loss of business due to covid-19 pandemic at about 50% us and european union together constitute for approximately 60% of the total apparel exports from india every 1% decline in the us and european union the gross domestic product in 2020 could lead to at least 2 to 3% drop in the value of their apparel import the export of ready made garment declined by 91% in april and by about 60% during the march quarter yarn exports fell between 80 to 90% in april and about 30% in march march uh, 3 billion us worth of apparel business was lost during the pandemic and approximately 65% of the apparel exporter payment amounting to at least 2 us billion dollar approximately rupees 15300 crores is currently stuck with foreign buyers the foreign buyers are postponing orders and demanding hefty discounts good and goods in transit are also not moving the cargo charges were 140 per kg before the outbreak of covid-19 it has now doubled those already dispatched are also finding as no takers on the various foreign ports two to three months of old shipments remains unpaid leading to a huge blow to cash flow 60% of the total apparel exports from india in value terms are expected to fall The global apparel supply chain could continue to face the turbulent times in the next one to two years. The pandemic has affected the majority of Indian export market. The US and European Union together constituted for approximately 60% of the total apparel export from India in value terms, causing order cancellation. Apparel exports are expected to fall due to drying up of orders in the last quarter of financial year 2020, working capital issues and lack of clarity on the duties and intensive incentives especially with exporters from Bangladesh, Sri Lanka and Vietnam receive preferential access. Now let us look at the current scenario of textile and apparel industry with lockdown being lifted in the market and now opening in different countries the units are now running at 50% of the capacity 
they are trying to procure local labor in the absence of migrant labor who have returned to their native places exporters have started receiving orders in small quantities from abroad and these industries are mainly of uh, two types of business models e-commerce and store based supply those who are engaged in e-commerce business are getting orders from abroad however it is still a bad time for those who are associated with store based supply getting adequate manpower to ramp up the production is another major challenge the industry is facing right now production makes sense only when domestic and export market opens again improving industrial immune system is also one of the way to fight the pandemic disruptions the condition of textile and apparel industry of india is so pathetic that the government should consider ways to provide cushion to the sector from these tough times the communication and manufacturing association of india has urged the government to take a plethora of measures to protect the textile and apparel industry and these includes wage subsidies interest subvention on total borrowings and working capital and extending modernism on terms and working capital loans to 6 months taking a visionary approach in this difficult times may be tough but it is necessary for the survival of textile and apparel industry of india which is the most important sector of india and with this i wind up my presentation thank you so much everyone friends i am dr sandeep thorat working as head department of english I did not know about the Karanja Lad, Maharashtra, India. I authored a book, Indian Ethos and Culture in Miss Vijayakanth's Poetry, a critical study published by Atlantic Publishers and Distributors Private Limited, New Delhi. I contributed forty-one research papers in journals and presented twenty-eight research papers at various conferences and workshops. attend at 53 conferences seminars and workshop at national and international level i also organized swedish sponsored national international conferences and workshop for students and faculty members today i am going to present paper entitled indian lifestyle in post covid 19 challenges and solutions uh, this paper focuses the spread of covid 19 and its consequences of uh, friends you know the entire world has occupied and frightened by the fear of covid 19 because corona virus is a very dreadful disease it has no vaccine the virus is changing its forms continuously day by day and that's why it has become very difficult for the scientists to find out the exact family of corona virus in order to find out a concrete vaccine on it science and technology will definitely prove a bless for us in future they will definitely find out the vaccine to cure this disease after covid 19 we have post covid 19 india and in post covid 19 india there will be a very diverse effects on lifestyle of indians because the whole world is in lockdown and uh, everyone has doing his duty his work from home this is not our tradition it becomes very difficult for common man to live a life that's why post covid 19 india will have a diverse effect on lifestyle of india today the whole world is suffering from this dreadful disease except china and uh, everything is open there so we must learn something and we must come forward and uh, by taking care of ourselves we can uh, do our work the paper also concentrates on post covid 19 is there any prospect of online teaching learning in india because you know that this covid 19 has a very dreadful impact on every sector and education is not exception to it it has also stopped the education there is no spirit in education today and therefore the paper tries to find out any scope or any prospects of online teaching learning in india so that 
we can continue with the work the purpose of the paper is making awareness against the this pandemic that's why we must take care of ourselves we must stay at home we must do the things online we must use technology latest technology to do the work the paper also decide the policies about post covid 19 because in post covid 19 india we have to face a lot of things uh, we, we cannot uh, guess the future today it has a very diverse effect on human lifestyle and customs while preparing this paper online data collection is used as a methodology for this paper and the collected data is analyzed after analysis of the data the hypothesis of this paper is made while the importance of research paper you know that in such time we are doing our work from home uh, this study is very important from the point of view of whole universe the paper also follows the guidelines to save lives of the people it also studies post covid 19 lifestyle because you know friends all uh, indians have <coughs> a different a uh, characteristics attitude because of this corona virus we have to change our attitude discussing about the social distancing social distancing is the first step to stay safe from corona virus in social distancing we are creating a distance in neighborhood in attitude and that's why to change our traditional lifestyle in post covid 19 india there are several challenges we have to face such as how to live life how to handle situations which are full of a critical crisis there is a struggle post covid 19 india will have a struggle and hard work to live life we have to uh, grow our immunity power the person who will have a strong immunity power will be able to work at offices at different fields he will be preferred everywhere at the time of interview then there is social distancing this social distancing is going to change outlook about the life because we have to keep the distance from one person to another in india as india is a land of culture and he thought it is also known for its sanskruti it is famous for its sanskruti and culture this social distancing is against of it because we have a very strong relationship with our neighbors with our friends with our relatives with other people we cannot live without friendship and without keeping this distance if we keep this distance social distancing then we will break relations we will have a very dreadful expenses and budget and it will not uh, adjust to the pocket of the poor this corona virus is going to create a new type of challenge that is a gulf between corona community and healthy people corona community will be despised by the healthy people it will create a big and large gulf between these two classes and this class will be developed in post covid 19 india in such condition education in india has stopped today and education is the basis of any country for its development and improvement we are going through a looming nature of this corona virus and because of it the schools and colleges have been locked down in such conditions we have to face all the challenges the paper also makes attempt to find out either there is any prospect of online teaching learning in india thank you very much Good morning, everyone. Myself and Jayma, Assistant Professor, Department of Commerce and Management, in Sarala Devi Satish Chandra Agarwal Government Corporate Autonomous College, Bellary, which is affiliated with Vijayanagara Shri Krishna Devaraya University, Bellary. I am very glad to inform that 
the two days interdisciplinary international e conference on impact of covid-19 on various area areas of global economy science and humanities which has been collaboratively organized by gondavana university mahila mahavidyalaya and chintamani college of commerce in that e conference international interdisciplinary e conference i am going to present a paper presentation on new theories of management after lockdown this is my paper presentation topic where i am going to try to tell about what exactly the new theories of management my objectives of this paper is an overview of management theories and as well as aim to consolidate the management theories this is my objective here today friends we are hearing uh, we, we know that we are facing a pandemic situation where we are trying to overcome with that pandemic situation that is covid 19 a covid 19 is a severe acute respiratory syndrome where it can be spread by one person to the another now as of now we do facing more than 4.13 billion people have been recovered as of now that is june and then it 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 resulting more than it, it made them to everybody need to think about what all the prevention measures need to be taken out in that respect here it is a situation where everybody need to take care of our health and take care of our environment also in that respect as of now we are in the phase of lockdown stage of stage or a phase of quip which ha which has been scheduled is it is going to end at 30th june of 2020 here as we know that the management is nothing but a in previous days or in olden days or in inception stage day, days management is nothing but an a work has to be done to others but that perception regarding in regards to that management has been changed nowadays here work together is a new mantra for success of every individual or any business or any country success in that respect here we need to understand what exactly the management and we need to know that what are all the important evolution thoughts we need to understand what are all the important stages of evolution of management thought that is management evolution thought in that respect we do come across pre scientific management period it has been and then we do come across the classical theory then we have a neo classical theory and bureaucratic model after knowing all these evolution stages we need to understand what exactly the management theory is here in general management theory is nothing but an it need to be focused on again it need to be focused and it need to be communicate and it need to be evaluate the exact situation what are all the provisions and what are all the solutions we are going to get or we are going to find out in that respect in such scenario we need to understand there are so many are uh, there are essentially 11 essential management theories as of now we do come across by the important management gurus they contributed towards the management as of now in that respect we do come across the first management theory that is systems theory and then we do come across principles of administrative management and then we have bureaucratic management and scientific management theory x and y and then we have elton moyer's human relations theory then classical management theory then we do come across a contingency management theory then modern management theory again we have quantitative management theory then organization has a learning system these are all the some important management theories which has been contributed by the epinonin or known management gurus then after knowing all these important 
management theories i try to consolidate the new management theory that is harmonial management theory here it concluded the version of all the above management theories this is the theory which helps to access the need or in requirement of the physical facilities and self of an individual when individuals are in right path of ethical value based then it leads to harmony in the individual again if one individual get got his harmony in his life then automatically it will leads to a harmony in family then it leads to an harmony in society and as a whole a globe can be automatically harmonious then in that respect the ethical values plays a very important role where we are not following this ethical sense or ethical sense in our daily life that has to be implemented by ourselves that is what i want to convey in this paper presentation thank you for a listening active listening of my presentation thank you one and all thank you so much Good afternoon. Myself, Dr. Ravi Dharpawar, Chintamani Mahavidyalaya Gugus, District Chandrapur. Today is Gondwana University Garchiroli and Chintamani Group of Institutions and Women's College Amrauti jointly organized by two-day international interdisciplinary e-conference. I thank the organizer for giving me the opportunity to present my paper here today's my paper topic is impact of covid 19 on international relations telegram or anything in this paper in the beginning of 2020 a novel corona virus emerged and it may be the most terrible situation of the early 21st century of all modern lifestyle globalization and international relations between countries the washington post has been called corona virus is the 8 months for the disturbance of international relation the outbreak of covid-19 is a uh, become disturbs the crisis of health over than 4 lakh people died across the world there are various ordinances by the every country government to say to stay at home travels restrictions and break the chinese transmissions of corona virus the result of the economic depression large number of unemployment of the financial institutions so the covid-19 made the dynamic changes in international relation american president president donald trump stopped the funding to who and china's reactions on the american action covid-19 has affected international relations and causes of diplomatic transition the medicine diagnostic test and hospitals equipment for the corona virus this is 2019 later of the some countries have a seek of other countries to for to for not cancelling the disease effectively and result in the uncontrolled spread of the virus so during the period of covid 19 we control we cannot find the smooth international relations between the countries the keynotes of my research paper impact of covid-19 international relations please who and foreign policy 
in this paper the research is clearly focus on the consequences of corona virus in the world and efficiently focus on covid-19 which made uh, the direct impact on international relation international bodies and citizens everywhere it is the time of crisis the trend and test the political theories but also often a uh, impulsively and cement that the fact of the coronavirus is not treated on particular reason every global crisis impact on international system it street or norms and introduces in this the even international relations will be raised then the modern international relations in reach in the free of travels of peoples the various stages and appears on in the country's opportunity through the international travels travelers all the countries great up to the chain cancel international flights some very countries record their citizens from the countries and the various apart appear in the travels in in the ships may a travels we we stand the rules of countries for such a ships rejected during the hour their hours in this paper i include the impact on international relation of usa and china what is the relationship between usa and china the chinese government has has been citizens by the untreated state on holdings and an pandemic of beginning the chinese provided the brazil and other countries they struggle on in this uh, virus as well as the country, other countries the impact of covid-19 on greece the disease of on uh, districts of corona virus has also make to impact on price brazil russia india china south america burning brazil other brics nation imports on lockdown measure a scramble of their health infrastructures and launch of measure in protect on vulnerable people the india russia and share the borders of with china and share with the various countries as well as in this research paper in fact i we uh, i will include in impact of covid-19 on india and china relation the corona virus has changed almost uh, almost uh, every politics policies of each nation so i want to throw the lights on international relations between the india and china 2020 mark of the one mark of 17th anniversary of uh, anniversary of india china diplomatic treaties which have been tamil comparative for the most part of the last seven decades so this reach is focus on uh, focus that what will the relationship between the two countries after corona as well as we include in this paper impact of covid-19 on japan and south korea relationship as well as the impact on covid-19 on relationship of russia and south korea as well as india's action during the covid-19 in the this situation indian government has taken the decision uh, to burn ban the travels of foreigners who had been the china after journey 15th and indian airlines cancel flight from the country dispute a person dispute of person for cancel 
on Indian companies to take the advantage of the great hearts against China. Read now. In short, there is the disturbance of between the Indo-China relationship, international relationship, as well as in this paper, I will I will include the action to WHO on traces of COVID-19. The upload statement of WHO declared that. COVID-19 is become a traffic and run of smooth international relations. In the light of rapidly evolving situation, the director of WHO organized the following to advance the emergency committees every convened under the international health regulation and declaration that the current outbreak of corona is the public health emergency in international concerns. Another important statement of the WHO that travel and uh, trade should be restricted during the COVID-19 outbreak. So, in short, if international trade and travels uh, will ban, then in it will afford of international relationship in the countries. In the conclusion of this my paper, the research is clearly focused on COVID-19 outbreak and its impact on international relations. The coronavirus separate rapidly and it is the change in the realm from global and relation between the countries. Each and every country is given the opportunity, uh, opportunity to save the life of citizens. The most various constituents, including the um, economic displacement, stresses, and go global government trades, made the discussion impact on international relations. And some references uh, I will include uh, in this paper. Thank you. Thank you very much. Morning to one and all. I am Dr. Sushila Lanka, working as assistant professor in the Department of Biosciences and Biotechnology, Krishna University, Bachvi Patnam, Andhra Pradesh. Now I am going to present my paper titled Household Herbs, Spices and Ayurvedic Products as Effective Remedies to Fight Against COVID-19. Viral infections in general are tough to deal with and antibiotic treatment is ineffective against them. Our immune system also faces big challenges posed by these tiny microbes. Most of the antiviral medications currently available to treat these uh, viral infections cause adverse side effects. Our mother nature provided us with certain remedies to treat these tiny agents in the form of kitchen herbs. These herbal remedies, by boosting our body's natural defense mechanisms, help to fight the viral infections. SARS-CoV-2, the virus that is shaking the globe, infecting lakhs of people, has taken its birth in Wuhan city, Hubei province of China on 30th December 2019. The virus has rapidly spread to almost all countries, thus making WHO to declare public health emergency of international concern on 30th January 2020. The virus is initially named as 2019 novel coronavirus and later on permanently named as SARS-CoV-2 by WHO because of its close resemblance to SARS coronavirus that caused a SARS pandemic in 2002. China is the birthplace of these two major pandemics. This statistical data I have collected from WHO site on 13th June 2020. SARS coronavirus, that is SARS-CoV-2, infected 
75 lakhs 53,182 people with the 4,23,349 confirmed deaths from the point of its first infection reported in 2019 December. The virus has affected almost 260 countries or areas or territories. Bats are considered to be the reservoirs of SARS-CoV-2, thus transmitting the virus to humans via intermediate hosts, which are reported to be pangolins. There are different ways of spreading of uh, SARS-CoV-2. Some of these include droplets coming from sneezing and coughing activities, direct contact, include, that includes shaking hands, hugging, etc. Indirect modes like hospital beds, lift buttons, etc. Vertical transmission from, that is from mother to babies. And another uh, important mode is asymptomatic transmission where the people infected with the virus uh, remains uh, asymptomatic, that is they won't show any symptoms, but they act as carriers and transmit the virus to, healthy, uh, to other healthy individuals. Currently, this mode of transmission is the predominant way infecting more and more people. The virus infects both upper and lower respiratory tracts. The symptoms of upper respiratory tract infection includes runny nose, sniffling, nasal blockages, sore throat, cerebral pain, and achy muscles. And besides these general symptoms, the upper respiratory tract infection also results in cough, brevity of breath, fever, and sleepiness. The symptoms of lower respiratory tract includes serious cough with mucus secretion, brevity of breath, chest congestion, and wheezing. If the infection spreads deep into the lungs, it may end up with pneumonia and finally ARDS, that is acute respiratory distress syndrome where the people experience difficulty in breathing. Let us see who are more vulnerable to the infection by this SARS-CoV-2. The elderly people and the people with specific issues like diabetes, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, hypertension, cardiovascular disease, usually they develop arts, septic shock, metabolic acidosis, coagulation dysfunction, finally leading to death. Let us see the treatment for SARS-CoV-2 infection. Truly speaking, at this point, there is no particular prescribed treatment to treat this infection. The current treatment methodology includes indicative treatment coupled to oxygen treatment. Patients with respiratory failure are usually treated with mechanical ventilation. Patients with septic shock, they need hemodynamic help. The immunity in the body plays a fundamental role in the control of SARS-CoV-2 infection. Proper intake of dietary nutrients and regular exercises, especially yoga and pranayama, improves immune responses and as well lung capacity. Let us see some of the antiviral drugs that are currently being used to treat SARS-CoV-2 infection. Remsevir, which is developed a decade ago, was found to be safe for use in people. Initially, the drug, this drug was effective in controlling viral replication in mass. Another drug that is Calectra, it is a combination of lopinavir and ritonavir. This works uh, against HIV. Favipiravir, a drug used to treat influenza. Orbidol, another antiviral drug that was tested along with Calectra as a treatment for COVID-19. Scientists are struggling hard to identify a potential drug candidate. And even uh, another drug that is called ibuprofen, uh, which is an anti-inflammatory drug 
is also suggested by the scientists to use uh, for COVID-19 patients because of its role in easing breathing problems. The drug hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine, which were previously used to treat COVID-19, uh, was currently not in use due to safety issues. The vaccine developments are currently underway and more than 100 projects around the world are mainly involved in the development of vaccine against uh, this particular virus. Vaccines not only protects the people who are vaccinated, but also protects the community known as herd, commu herd immunity. Let us see the disadvantages and drawbacks uh, by using uh, these antiviral drugs. The synthetic drugs prove to be ineffective owing to their narrow range of activity, toxicity, limited therapeutic usefulness and resistant viral strains. In addition, the metabolic properties of viruses make them very difficult to control and even there are only few antiviral agents synthesized so far to treat viruses. Most of the antiviral drugs mainly targets different stages of viral replication cycle. The major drawback with the use of antiviral drugs is uh, viral adaptation to these drugs and developing drug resistance by rapid mutations in target regions of uh, viral genome. The broad spectrum antiviral drugs, although found to be less prone to drug resistance, their efficacy depends on cytotoxicity and antiviral effects. As synthetic drugs faces the challenges of drug resistance, developing compounds from natural sources offer effective antiviral treatment. Medicinal plants are sources of a variety of chemical compounds that have ability to inhibit both RNA and DNA viruses. This is the table that shows common household herbs that have already shown their efficacy against certain viruses. Let me read out some of the herbs, household herbs that show antiviral activity. Garlic, ginger, oregano, sage, basil, fennel, lemon balm, peppermint, licorice, Echnesia, Rosemary, Sambacus, Astragalus. These are some of the household herbs that have already proven for their efficacy to treat uh, a variety of viral infections like uh, influenza virus, herpes simplex virus. Some uh, some of these uh, herbs, they, they have shown anti-HIV activity, okay, anti-hepatitis activity. This is the table that shows some of the common spices which we use for various purposes. All these are uh, common spices. Uh, which are available in our kitchen, like haldi, long pepper, jeerak, adarak, methi, tejpatta, that is biryani leaf, darushni, that is cinnamon, lavang, that is clove, pepper, that is black pepper, piper nigram, mustard, brassica gentia, Hing, that is uh, ferula asafoetida, saffron, that is kunkuma puvu, peppermint, that is mentha. So all these spices 
which are available in our kitchen have already proven for their effectiveness towards a range of uh, viruses this table shows some of the ayurvedic products that show antiviral activity like ashwagandha vithania somnifera shows antiviral activity against ranicate disease virus vaccinia virus and the and the uh, product also shows anti hiv activity another one is uh, guduchi tinospora cordifolia and another ayurvedic uh, product is ashtamadu glycerhija glabra which also shows antiviral activity towards varicella zoster virus kaposis sarcoma associated herpes virus herpes simplex virus 1 epstein bar virus etc and there is another polyherbal formulation that is called oish 64 which showed activity like anti malaria anti filaria activity also found to be effective on chicken gunya and influenza like illness and chavan prash we all know this ayurvedic product which is prepared by using various uh, herbal preparations the most of uh, the most common and the predominant uh, uh, one is amla and this uh, this chavan prash is known to boost immune system and there is another one pipli that is piper longum which already uh, proven to be anti with anti hbb activity thank you one and all for your patient listening hello everybody i am julie kaur my topic is mathematical aid to address the engagement issue of migrated laborers due to covid-19 pandemic in india now let's go for abstract of the paper this is the abstract of the paper in this paper a mathematical mo model based on linear transportation problem is proposed to correlate the placement issue of job loss people during lockdown period due to covid-19 and the economic constraints of various organizations now let's go for a brief introduction this is a short note about corona viruses this is some works on mathematical modeling on epidemic now why mathematical modeling due to covid-19 pandemic most of the affected countries including india declared total or partial lockdown for a certain period of time for which some migrated laborers lost their jobs and they started coming back to their native places a mathematical model may help the policy makers to manage and place the homecoming migrated laborers in a suitable positions now let's go for model formulation the model to be formulated is 3 by 4 matrix database model the workers are categorized into three groups w1 w2 w3 according to their education qualifications and the organizations who offer jobs are categorized into o1 o2 o3 o4 ai number of workers in the i group bj number of vacancies in z organization cij salary offered by z organization to i group xij number of workers to be recruited from i group by z organization in the usual situation the total number of vacancy is less than number of workers so the problem will is an unbalanced transportation problem the ltp model is of the form equation number 1 represent the grand minimum budget of the grand total minimum budget of the organizations equation number 2 represent the restrictions to be followed as the number of workers number of jobs and the salaries offered all are predefined therefore ai bj cij are constants 
Also, XIJ is the number of workers to be assigned. Hence, XIJ is a variable. Additionally, the situation is tried to address with a minimum budget. And so the yes, budget value Z is yeah. minimum. The data in tabular form is this. Now to solve this problem, the unbalanced problem is first converted to a balanced one by considering a proxy organization O5. Then applying Hoggle's method, the initial basic feasible solutions are determined after computation of this. Optimality is set and recorded applying modified distribution method. The final table takes the form. This is the final computation table. In this table, it shows that the organization O1 recruited X11 people from W1 with C11 salary per month, X21 from W2 group with C21 salary per month, X31 from W3 group with C31 salary. Similarly, O2, O3, O4 organization recruited their people with defined salaries to exhaust their vacant post. The remaining X15 people from W1, X25 from W2, X35 from W3 goes to the proxy group O5 without any salary. That means these people remain unemployed. They must be self-employed. And this is a simple model, simple example of this model, which I want to skip. Now, the conclusion is, it is not possible to offer placements to all the thousands of job loss people in a short period. Encouragement with financial assistance for self-employment is a possible solution for the workers belonging to the proxy group. The proposed model may help the policymakers of government and non-government organizations to manage and address the suddenly emerging impact of COVID-19 on the job loss people in India. References, thanks. Then the Wait for a minute. We are going to start some remaining presentations. Good morning, everyone. The title of my paper for this webinar is The title of my paper for this webinar is Impact 
of COVID-19 on science and innovation. Coronavirus disease 2019, that is COVID-19, is an infectious disease caused by severe acute respiratory syndrome. It was first identified in December 2019 in Wuhan, China. More than 7.5 million of people of the cases have been reported across 188 countries and territories. The resulting is more than 4,21,000 deaths and more than 3.53 million of people have recovered till 12 June 2020. No doubt, this pandemic disease is challenging to the world community in all corners, that is science and innovations, medicine and diagnosis, peace, culture, religion, traveling system, social relation, and human behavior, etc. As we know, COVID-19 is called by its different name. The first name of this COVID-19 is Corona, second COVID-19, third NCOV, acute respiratory disease, fourth novel coronavirus pneumonia, fifth severe acute respiratory syndrome, coronavirus 2, etc. In all of cases, the symptoms of COVID-19 are generally found in two ways. The first ways of symptoms of COVID-19 is common symptoms, in which we see fever, loss of appetite, fatigue, loss of smell, shortness of breath, cough, coughing of sputum, muscle aches, and pain. The second symptoms is severe symptoms, difficulty waking, confusion, bluish face or lips, coughing of blood, persistent chest pain, decreased white blood seal, kidney failure, high fever. The situation of the world has been declared that we have no medicine, no vaccine against COVID-19. World medical science is tackling this epidemic disease with the help of trial medicine only. Our doctors are prescribing the medicine which are generally used in case of malaria, HIV, swine flu, Ebola, and tuberculosis, etc. COVID-19 has ruined the life and pushed us in dark galleries. China's killer disease, COVID-19, has created a big challenge in the world and making us helpless. It is fact that we are on a stage of no medicine and no diagnosis. Power of the world is silent and innocent peoples are weeping. Our science and innovation is mostly affected, but we are trying to cross the river of problems till the vaccine comes in the market we should avoid that all activities through which coronavirus can spread among us in current scenario. Our medical science is on surprising stage, looking terrible face of COVID-19. But our scientists devoted to invent its vaccine and medicine as soon as possible. I hope the day of happiness and pleasure comes very soon in the world society. Thank you. pandemic has changed multiple aspects of life, including the teaching learning system. Although it has created a vast physical gap between the educators and the students, technology can be used to bridge this gap effectively. Hence, you can say that it has highlighted the indispensable nature of technology and the e-learning adopted 
from the school level till the graduation level for all educational systems is filling up this way. So let's put forward a few basic expectations that a student or a learner has from their educators. One wants to enhance the quality of learning and teaching and also meet these expectations by also improving the efficiency and effectiveness. Audiovisual representations are also preferred. Now, what are the potholes or a few errors that money faces while trying to bridge this gap? A few obvious glitches are the network connectivity, a systematic method to record the attendance of the attendees, the duration and course of the lectures and completion of assignments, provision of library facilities, how to recreate a laboratory in the virtual arena, and the conduction of examinations. Concluding, I would like to say that the instructor's expertise in learning, counseling, and support plays a major role for learning such that it is self-paced, collaborative, and can influence the student's learning and increase their motivation during such times. Thank you. Wait for one minute. Myself, Dr. Pompey Ghosh with Dr. Devabrata Das is going to present one paper on studies on M and Rigel status on Rosella Barmani and its ecological status in the high distance forest of West Bengal. Tropical sundew that is Rosella Barmani is called as Shujushishi in Bengali and this plant is found in various parts of our state from a highland to lowland and used by tribal people for medicinal purposes. This plant is herbaceous with a very short stem and Myself, Dr. Pompey Ghosh with Dr. Devabrata Das is going to present one paper on studies on M agrogel status on Rosella Barmani and its ecological status in dry deciduous forest of West Bengal. 
Tropical sundew that is Drosera barmani is called as Surya Shishir in Bengali, and this plant is found in various parts of our state, from a highland to lowland, and used by tribal people for medicinal purposes. This plant is a herbal. And containing to the Drosera Barmani, and uh, the first one is its habitat, second one is the uprooted Drosera Barmani, and third one is a one uh, saprophytic plant present on this field. Medicinal use of Drosera Barmani is well known, and in our this plant is insectivorous, so it captures insect of tiny kind, but uh, persistency of plant is uh, in usher soil, perhaps, is due to the presence of amphangi in soil, which help them to withstand the species under high drought and temperature. It is found along with other species as weeds in field, though the occurrence of the species is higher and makes them fit under various conditions. Amphangi found in soil and distribution is ubiquitous. It is found as a spore or mycelia and can infect the species in field. But the degree of infection is not severe, though they make a symbiotic relationship. Amphangi make soil congenial and help them to establish a bridge between plants and soil to uptake phosphate and other micro and macronutrients. Plant and amphangi relationship is important to establish a relationship among them, not only for Drosera Barmani, but other species too. As there is no such kind of report from directed in Southwest Bengal, so the present study was taken into account to the actual status of the selected plant and the ecologic, ecological association in connection with amphangal relationship. This is the material method of our study. A regular and periodical study in our forest area was conducted for in three parts uh, of the undulated uh, land in Medinipur district of South West Bengal to collect Google plants with roots and specific soil. Medicinal plants along with the soil sample were collected from the selected marked small plots, uh, one meter into one meter at regular intervals. Identification of species was done with the help of available literature and imported value index of the species was made using the formula of uh, Mr. 1968. Feeder roots of Drosera Barmani plants were collected and cut into approximately one semi pile pieces. Fragments were washed under tap water property, and uh, root samples were taken into labeled glass test tube, and 25% KOA solution was added. That is, cold treatment was done. After three days, Roots were taken in nylon tea sips and washed under tap water. Then these pieces were soaked in dilute acyl solution for three to four minutes and again washed in tap water. Cleared root segments were stained by writing ink as stain. Bhem microbial coloration in roots were assessed following Giovannetti method and McGonigal method. Stained root pieces of approximately one semi length were randomly placed on slide in a group of five to observe fungal hypi, vesicle, and arbuscle. Percentage of root colonization was also uh, calculated. Similarly, spore density and by or spore number was calculated from 100 gram rhizospheric soil by Jardiman and Nicholson method. And this is our result and discussion. Drosera barmani was present in all the quadrants taken by us and the number of plant range from 16 to 22 in the study site, that is one into one meter. In this study, overall 25 plant species was recorded. Highest importance value index was observed in case of Bruna triflora, followed by Drosera barmani, and lowest was found in case of Jornia diphyla. Here, Centanthera tanqui barica is a root parasite found in the same community along with a fern that is Ophioglossum graminium. As the species Drosera barmani is available in all the quadrates and frequency is 100%, so the species is not threatened but regarded as least concerned as per the record of IUCN. Uh, uh, Arbuscular microbial fungal association and dark septic endophytic hyphae were observed in the cortical cell of Drosera barmani roots. M. fungi 
colonized here as Aram type colonization by RV school 39 to 45 percent, V school 12 to 60 percent, and high fee 48 to 53 percent during post monsoon. The present work supported the work of Chakraborty and Harikamar, sport density range between 210 to 4, 520. Study also revealed that dominant M fungal genera found under Drosera Barmani community was Gloma species followed by Jagaspora species. We acknowledge uh, Gondona University, Mohila Mahabiddala, Amaravati, and Chintamani Group of College for giving us such type of uh, such type, type of opportunity. And these are the sports and root colonization. These are the references. Thank you. from the Department of Sociology, uh, currently teaching at Government General Degree College at Pedon. So the topic for today's presentation is COVID-19 and racism in India. So the World Health Organization uh, said on 31st of December 2019, an unknown pneumonia-like virus was detected in Wuhan, China. So after naming it COVID-19 on 11th of February 2020, the WHO announced it as a pandemic in 11th March 2020. That led to a sealing of international borders, uh, stopping of international airlines, domestic airlines, so the entire globe coming to a kind of a halt. So in India, the Prime Minister Narendra Modi called for a nationwide lockdown on 24th of March 2020. So currently we are on the fifth phase of the lockdown, or as some call it, the first 1.0 stage of unlock. So in this presentation, I'm going to talk about the exponential increase of racial discrimination of Northeast Indians, along with the spread of the virus. And I'm going to show how stigmatization and marginalization, along with the pandemic, has doubly burdened the Northeastern Indians. So first, to define what is racism, racism is defined as discriminatory behavior based on inherited physical appearance. So in India, we see that after the first case that took place on 30th of January 2020 in Kerala, there was an exponential increase in the number of cases of COVID positive, COVID-19 positive, as well as the cases of discrimination or racial marginalization that took place. So who are these Northeast Indians? According to Walter and Subba, it is an identity that does not exist within the Northeast region itself. There is not a single criteria to understand the Northeast Indians, but it is a shared alienation from the mainland. So I'll talk about a few cases of racial discrimination that took place which are all, most of them were self-reported in social medias. So on 22nd March, 2020, nine employees from Nagaland working at the office of a dental insurance company at Ahmedabad faced official complaints alleging that they were from China. Even after the reports came back negative, the authorities refused to release them and were kept under forced quarantine along with other suspects of coronavirus. So on 20th of March, 2020, a 24-year-old woman from Sikkim was denied treatment for urinary tract infection or UTI at two different hospitals in Kolkata. Finally, as she got home around 7 p.m. after being treated by a third hospital, she got a call from the police accusing her of running away from the second hospital and to come back for isolation. So she says that, and I quote, I felt like I was being treated like a dog. I was hungry and in pain. So I asked the nurse for medicine, but she just ignored me. A doctor came to check on, on her the next morning and he questioned if she was from China. So we see a number of cases, a case of a woman being spat at in Delhi. Another case, a woman being spat at in Mumbai. We also see grocery stores refusing to give food supplies, fearing that they are not Indians and they are from outside India and thus having COVID-19 or 
carrying the coronavirus infection. We see Taxi Wala is not agreeing to take them to places, the Northeastern people to different places. So all of these cases started to rise up. So what is the underlying factor of all of these cases? It is the constant question of nationality and belonging. The constant stereotyping based on physical appearance, which does not fall into the category of the Indian face, and thus the double burden of the Northeast Indians having to face the pandemic, as well as racial discrimination and marginalization, along with the constant questioning of your nationality or your Indianness. Okay, so the panic caused by the pandemic and the fear and anxiety that people felt resulted in a series of racial discrimination and stigmatization of the Northeast Indians. So how do we make sense or understand this kind of racism in India? So for that, I'm going to talk about two instances. The number one is on April 2012, two Northeast students died of racial discrimination and another one on 29th January 2014 that led to creation of a committee by the state under chairmanship of MP Bayes Barwa. So it had a number of recommendations. This committee gave a number of recommendations. The most important one was creation of new or stricter laws against discrimination. Create fast track courts. So intervention in education by making people or sensitizing Indians about Northeast India and Northeast Indians so that there is a proper integration. However, what happened was even today is uh, 2020, this bill still stays pending. Okay, and that is a very sad part about it. So according to Carmichael and Hamilton, racism is not merely the actions and prejudices of individuals against individual. Racism, as they argue, can be perpetuated by social organizations, social institutions. Racism represents the processes built into social entities such as governments, bureaucracies, and culture that reinforce the racial hierarchy. Powell further adds that racism need not be either intentional or individualist. Institutional practices and cultural patterns can perpetuate racial inequality without rel relying on racist actors. Powell explains that the joint working of various institutions in the society produce critical racialized outcomes. Following Powell, we can argue that the structures that give rise to behavior. So racism in India is much more structural than an act of an individual or an individual act of discrimination. I would like to conclude by saying that the racial discrimination cases that surfaced were a reminder that India needs to form strict and stringent laws against racism for complete and healthy nation building. Priority should also be given to law enforcement as most of the Northeastern Indians are found to be very, very wary and apprehensive about the police. The added scars of this discrimination when the entire human race is struggling against infection and death may result in further alienation from the mainlanders. So trust building has to be done and immediate concrete steps by the state may help the current situation. Thank you. The paper I'm presenting today is a study on impact of COVID-19 on digital marketing. The global pandemic of COVID-19 is you know, having a lot of impact on various sectors in the economy as well as in other sectors also. Similarly, the digital marketing and advertising sector also has been impacted drastically in global, regional as well as local level. However, if you consider the impact with other sectors, the impact on digital marketing has been more or less a positive one, whereas all other sectors are you know, more or less negatively impacted. So in this paper, a study has been made to analyze and find out what are the impact that COVID-19 had on digital marketing and how it has boosted the a particular field of marketing. Introduction to digital marketing. Digital marketing is a branch of marketing that utilizes internet and digital technologies such as computers, mobile phones, website, social media platforms and applications, emails and other platforms to promote the products and services of brands and companies. The development of digital marketing took place in early 1990s and 2000s and this changed the way the brands and the marketers use technology for implementing marketing plans and strategies. Digital marketing strategies involve efforts to adopt the advertising to different platform and to customize the advertising to different buyers and also to different devices rather than a large coherent audience. 
research objectives. The main objective of the study are to study the concept of digital marketing, to analyze the impact of COVID-19 on digital marketing, and to analyze the future role of digital marketing post COVID-19 era. The scope of the study is related to understand the concept of digital marketing and to know the impact that the outbreak of COVID-19 pandemic had or has on digital marketing and also to understand the future of digital marketing post COVID-19 pandemic. The study is based on secondary sources of data. Secondary data are collected from published sources like textbooks, journals, magazines, and through the blogs and articles published in websites. Limitations of the study, the study is limited to secondary data, the constraint while collecting, uh, you know, time constraint while collecting secondary data, and the generalization of all the data from this study is not preferable. Next, we'll see the tools for digital marketing. First one is search engine optimization. Search engine optimization is an organic method of uh, getting traffic to a website uh, that is without making any payment, just by making some uh, you know, syntax adjustments and uh, you know, optimizing the website or optimizing the search engine like Google in such a way that whenever the customer or the potential customer makes uh, keyword search, which is related to the brand or service, that particular uh, you know, research, uh, search result will show the company's uh, uh, website link at the top. Search engine marketing is a system wherein the companies or the brands are making payment to search engine to make sure that whenever a customer makes query related to their products and brands, their product or brand comes at the first. For example, uh, if you know Cadbury is paying uh, Google for search engine marketing, in that case, whenever a customer search for chocolates, the first result appearing, that would be a sponsored result, which is also known as an inorganic result, and that would be of Cadbury's. Next, social media marketing. Social media marketing is basically utilizing various social media platforms such as Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, etc., for the purpose of marketing the product or uh, to simply put, to promote and advertise the products there. Next, video marketing and micro video marketing. So these are the things which are getting, you know, very much hype in the recent times, uh, particularly uh, with the, you know, uh, impact of COVID-19, people are staying at home more. So they are craving for video content and micro video content has increased. People are, you know, trying to look for video contents in YouTube, in TikTok and other micro uh, video streaming websites and applications. So the brands has also utilized this opportunity to market through videos and uh, through micro videos as well. Email marketing. Email marketing is a traditional kind of a tool in com compared to other tools in digital marketing. Whereas it is a direct approach where email database has been, uh, has been maintained and through that database, uh, sponsored emails and advertisement links are sent to the recipient. Affiliate marketing situation wherein it is a commission based kind of a scenario where an affiliate will be given a customized link. So whenever a customer clicks on that link and arrives at the landing page or website of the company or the brand, the brand or the company makes payment to that particular affiliate. It is more like hiring a commission agent for the purpose of uh, uh, doing online sales. Next, mobile marketing. So mobile marketing in simple words is conducting of marketing activities through the mobile phones. And finally, influencer marketing. Uh, in last few years, because of the advent of geo and the cheap internet facility provided, people are using a lot of online platforms and uh, uh, things like YouTube, etc. So as a result, uh, ordinary people have become extraordinary. Social media influencers, what they're known as the YouTube stars or the TikTok, TikTok stars, they have become very famous and the companies are trying to use their fame to market their products. For example, a company known by Navy, which markets uh, earphones and speakers, roped in Bubam Bam, a YouTuber uh, from India to promote their products. Next, the impact of COVID-19 on digital marketing. One is increased social media engagement paved day for increased social media marketing. <coughs> Uh, because uh, people were staying at home due to lockdown situation caused by COVID-19, people had more time to spend on mobile phones. So as a result, the social media engagement or the social media activity of the people has increased. And this also resulted in increased social media marketing. The brands obviously you know, will, have, will not have any advantage if they're going out and doing outdoor advertisement. So as a result, what they're doing is targeting uh, the people at a meeting point, which is social media in this case. Next, shift from key performance indicator expectation to lifetime value. So the marketing firms or the marketers or even for brand for that matter, they are not trying to you know, scale things. They are not trying to measure uh, the efficiency or effectiveness of the particular marketing events or marketing activities through any analytics. What they're doing is trying to create lifetime value for the customer. So since COVID-19 is a pandemic situation where the companies cannot look all in all in terms of profits and money, they have to try and look at creating value for the customer. And this value would, you know, escalate into a lifetime value wherein it would be beneficial to the marketers in the future rather than providing immediate benefits. Next, increased demand for video and micro video content. Like I said in the previous slide, the demand for uh, video content and micro video content has increased tremendously and brands are again roping influencers, TikTok stars, YouTube stars and collaborating with various TikTok channels or you know, YouTube channels to promote their products or even for that matter, the advertisements in uh, YouTube has also increased because people are uh, watching or spending more time on YouTube. Next, increased importance of AI-based chatbots. Another, you know, uh, drastically 
demanded feature uh, that is chatbots so people uh, you know because most of the people are even call center people are not working they are in their home or, or some people are on uh, work from home basis and some other are taken off for some other reasons companies have adopted to chatbots wherein the customers can send their queries in uh, message form and the chatbots would reply to them based on programmed artificial intelligence next emphasis of experiential marketing so what is happening here is people are spending more time online as they cannot go outside so the people are going and visiting the websites the landing pages of companies to compare and see the products and services so the emphasis now has moved to creating a virtual environment or an experience uh, delightful in those uh, landing pages or website so that the customers come back if they do not have a delightful experience the chances are that they won't come back again so this kind of experiential marketing has got high uh, due to covid-19 next surge in demand for over the top content hubs <coughs> OTT hubs like Netflix and Amazon have got a great degree of importance, and uh, again, these also provided an important uh, opportunity for marketers to rope in uh, collaboration with Netflix or Amazon Prime and promote their products uh, in the form of advertisements. There. Next, increased product research among customers. So the customers are increasingly researching about the product or service before buying it. Now they are having a lot of time. They are having the internet connectivity. They are having you know uh, time to use mobile, search for things. So what they are doing is they are researching about the product. They are going to YouTube, Google. They are going to YouTube and looking for uh, reviews. They are going to the landing pages of uh, websites and uh, you know comparing things there and then making a product decision. Uh, yeah, people are making research, but the quotient of research or the quantity of research that they are putting towards now has increased. Then next, we'll see the future of digital marketing post COVID 19. Uh, four very important points that I think is uh, very much considerable one is being socially responsible in social media. <coughs> Connecting to the people in social media is not that important. The thing is, maintaining that social media reputation will be the key point here because in social media, as much as you can become famous, the chances are that as quickly you can uh, face backlash. So, acting responsibly acting uh, with maturity and uh, addressing the needs of the customers through the social media platforms is going to is going definitely going to be a key you know, role that the digital marketers has to play uh, going forward in the post covid era next maintaining online reputation connected with the previous point maintaining reputation over a various platform be it the social media platform be it uh, the video and micro video hubs so the companies or the brands have to ensure that their reputation is not hurt because like i said you know Though there is social distance physically in social media, the people are getting connected closely. So as a result, any backlash would uh, result in a you know, huge backlash for the company. So the company has to maintain online reputation and they have to continue to maintain this reputation. It's managing web traffic. Again, uh, getting the web traffic now is important and similarly ensuring that the traffic uh, you know, keeps on coming or the repetitive traffic comes in post COVID is also important. So like the companies you know they are putting a lot of money in creating a virtual experience you know experience wherein the customers are delighted during the covid but if the if you know the customers are not coming post the covid situation then the money what they have put into this activity will not be of any benefit so the uh, you know company what they have to do is <coughs> sorry so they have to manage uh, the web traffic in or i mean ensure the web traffic comes in future so how can they do that by ensuring they provide the customer with better experience and an engaging you know website that would uh, that uh, uh, that would prompt the customer to come back to the website again and again. Next, investment on AI based bots. So, like I said, there is increasing demand for chatbots. So, people are liking the way the chatbots are you know providing them assistance. So, going further, rather than call centers or you know you calling the call centers, waiting for five to ten minutes, pressing a lot of buttons and wasting your valuable time there on waiting until you get the call connected. What the companies will uh, you know or might do in the future is invest on AI based chatbots, which would make the work faster. To conclude, I could say that the you know. In present scenario, digital is the heart of all the companies and digital marketing is essential to be in the hands of brands and marketers for implementing marketing strategies during the pandemic period. While the field of marketing in general was drastically imparted, the branch of digital marketing has been a tremendous boost. COVID-19 has put digital market on fast track and paved the way for further development and enhancement of digital marketing activities. Thank you. Myself, Dr. Pompey Ghosh with Dr. Devabrata Das is going to present one paper on studies on M agricultural status on Rosella Barmani and its ecological status in dry deciduous forest of West Bengal. This is Dr. Iram Fatima. Working as an assistant professor guest at Ramajan College of University of Uchi. The title of my research paper is The Impact of COVID-19 and Lockdown, a study of various personality dis disorders found in people. So uh, let's begin with introduction. So, uh, any infectious diseases are spread 
by either bacterial or viral agents and are ever present in society. Usually, infected cases are present in numbers below an expected threshold. But every once in a while, there may be an outbreak, a new strain or a new disease that has a significant impact at either a local or global level. So, there are three types of such diseases. Endemic, epidemic and pandemic. So, what is endemic? It describes a disease that is present commonly in a region or population. Then, what is epidemic? It is an outbreak that affects many people at one time and has been spread through one or several communities. Then, coming to pandemic. It is a term used to describe an epidemic when the spread is global. So, a pandemic is derived from Greek pan, meaning all, and demos, meaning people. And it is a term used to describe the rapid spread of a transmissible infectious disease over several continents or worldwide. Once an epidemic becomes global and affects a large percent of the population, it becomes a pandemic. The term pandemic and epidemic are used to describe the rate and distance of the spread of the disease and not the severity of the disease. These are some features of pandemic. They affect a wider geographical area. They infect a very large number of people. They often cause, they're often caused by a new virus or a new strain of a virus that has been dormant for many years. Then they spread quickly in humans as there is little to no existing immunity. Then it can cause a high number of deaths. Then because of the need to control the spread of the disease, there is often social disruption, unrest and economic loss. Then coming to COVID-19. So coronavirus disease that is COVID-19 is an infectious disease caused by a newly discovered coronavirus. On 31st December 2019, the virus was identified as a cause of a disease outbreak that originated in China. And since then, the virus has been infecting people and worldwide. In March 2020, the WHO declared the COVID-19 outbreak as pandemic. So there are some impact on mental status of various age groups. Although the decision of lockdown seems quite easy, to stay at home and continue work from home, but the coronavirus disease and the lockdown together are actually creating several problems, leading to a drastic decline in the economy of countries. Moreover, it's also affecting mental health of the people. Then there's some need for psychological immunity. In times of a pandemic such as COVID-19, physical immunity has been deemed of utmost importance. The need for psychological immunity has been overlooked even though it contributes immensely in the process of coping up with the disease. Pandemic and its psychological reactions. Psychological reactions to pandemics include maladaptive behaviors, emotional distress, and defensive responses. People who are prone to psychological problems are especially vulnerable. All of these features are clear evidence during the current COVID-19 pandemic. A study of 1,210 respondents from 194 cities in China in January and February 2020 found out that 54% of respondents treated the psychological impact of COVID-19 on death as moderate to severe, 29% report reported moderate to severe anxiety symptoms, and 17% reported moderate to, se to severe depressive symptoms. So there are some several uh, personality disorders and impacts. And uh, these are very much applicable on the people who are going through this emotional trauma, of physical trauma of COVID-19. So personality disorders whose causes remain unknown are met mental conditions that make individuals' behaviors towards situations differ from normal expectations. These conditions usually lead to stress and isolation. The American Psychiatric Association groups First, personality disorders into three broad clusters on the basis of symptoms referred to as A, B, and C. So, cluster A, which is suspicious. 
very good morning to everyone my name is dr ruchi tomar i am an academician researcher writer ex lecturer navi degree college lucknow the title of my presentation is contagion to quarantine literary analysis of cataclysmic change as you can see on the screen that there is a picture and in this picture there is a person who is wearing a mask the mask has the image of a lock the picture shows covid-19 
a contagious disease, quarantine, and lockdown. In this particular presentation, the first slide discusses the COVID-19, a contagious disease. The word contagion refers to the communication of disease from one person or organism to another by close contact. The history of contagious diseases has not been unknown to human beings because in the past also we often suffered with influenza, red death, black death, and so on. Therefore, the history of contagious diseases are not unknown to human beings. But there is a slight difference between the past and the present. Earlier, humans have successfully emerged from the difficult times and move on. But in the 21st century, science finds itself in a challenging phase and not able to swallow the COVID-19 contagion, which is so hard to control. The present day world is sated with the pain and affliction caused by COVID-19. In the next slide, uh, I'm giving the definition and uh, something about quarantine. That quarantine is a suggestive measure to COVID-19. The word quarantine has both French and Italian influences. By the 1600, English speakers started using the quarantina to mean isolation as protection from disease. The word quarantine originated from the Italian word quaranta, and it was adopted as an obligatory means of human-human and animal-human separation to prevent the contamination of disease. It was started in the time of Black Death and in the mid-1300, but its relevance can be widely understood in COVID-19. In quarantine phase, people have to stay at home and stay safe, either at home or either in hospitals. It resulted into infection fears, frustration, boredom, inadequate supplies, financial loss, stigma, and severe symptoms of post-traumatic stress. Now, literature and COVID-19. What is the contribution of literature in informing the readers, in telling them about COVID-19. The claustrophobic confinement, that is lockdown and quarantine, makes people to find solace in literature. Thus, the role of literature is to help the society to relive the new life amidst contagious phase and pose a dynamic change into it. Nowadays, literature is all about talking about the renovation of nature and new relationships between human beings. Today, literature reconstructs the cataclysmic change occurred in the definition of contagious diseases. New phrases are now more in the use of literature and new different areas of research also come up, like quarantine literature, migrant discourses, pandemic literature, and so on. Now, we have the emergence of corona poetry. COVID-19 transferred into many phases, from contagious disease to lockdown, then to quarantine. Therefore, a cataclysmic change can be observed in people's lives altogether. A major section of people stays home, so does, does a sudden upsurge of poetry on coronavirus emerge. Different metaphors like corona poetry, corona poets, corona poems, pandemic poetry, and so on. The constant use of such metaphors in literary text is a major source of inspiration for people who are fighting against the unknown enemy. Therefore, poems in literature are not just the snippets of speech capturing the memorable moments of our lives, but also picturize the harrowing reports from the front lines of the subconscious, that battleground of sense-making a constant war with the chaos of existence among COVID-19. In this particular slide, I'm giving some illustrated examples of Corona poems. This poem was published in Hindu newspaper. It is a composition of class 8th standard student of Karnatak. We may be young or old, but we must be bold. Against the enemy untold, we can't go to malls, nor can we go to waterfalls, because this virtue is scaring sending our spines into shivering. 
if you have to go out, think twice, wear your mask, be wise. After coming home, sanitize and wash your hands thrice. COVID is the name. It is playing a hide and seek game. By following the rules, we can ensure end game. In this particular poem, you can understand that the virus has just not only impacted human beings, but it has equally wished their literature as well. The scratch of COVID-19 is going to leave its mark as a scar. The virus will undoubtedly leave its mark on the pages of literature. Now, these are a few more uh, poems. Uh, without wasting any time, let me come to the conclusion. The spread of COVID-19 has persuaded human beings to realize the fragility of human existence in the face of fatal disease, but to also make us learn to be optimistic. The contribution of literary artists and their works are unparalleled in COVID-19 times. Literature is hopeful in taking calamity and lend us strength to tide over these travel times. The virus and its aftermath, that is lockdown, quarantine, and the accompanying emotions are being written about in fiction, non-fiction, and poetry. Therefore, literature is successful in analyzing, reviewing, discussing, interpreting, interrogating the today's world health issue, COVID-19, and its contagious wings that grab the human beings. My presentation is open for questions and suggestions. Thank you. Hi friends, myself, Dr. Nagesh Senigarapu, Assistant Professor, DTSS College of Commerce, Mumbai. Here today to present my research article titled, Is e-learning feasible in India? Now, as all of us know, in the second week of March 2020, most of the state governments across the country instructed schools and colleges to shut down temporarily to stop the spread of COVID-19 virus. Now, this is the period between March to June, which is the period of examination, admission process, and entrance test for different universities and competitive examination. The closure of educational institutions affected the teaching and assessment methodology. So what happened? Most of the management and administration told the staff members to keep the classes going. So educational institutions are focusing on e-learning methods, mostly in the form of video conferencing tool. This increased the workload of teaching staff as well as other administration staff. And they tried to keep the students busy through online teaching learning, basically lectures being conducted through video conferencing tools. Now, if we take a look at the review from different countries, it shows that e-learning has somewhat better results if used properly in a blended way and with proper technological design, which is learner-centered and with available digital infrastructure. Now, we have to consider this in Indian context, considering different factors to arrive at any significant policy shift if the policymakers are thinking to make it as a long-term perspective. Objectives of the study. The basic aim of the study is to examine the feasibility of the online teaching learning in India. It also compares the classroom versus online teaching and learning regarding the comprehensive purpose of education and tries to explore the combination of e-learning tools which could be considered with the conditions of digital accessibility to the masses. The methodology basically is, I have compiled the data from different secondary sources, reports from MHRD, reports from individual articles, reports from UNESCO, etc. The purpose of this study is to provide basis for empirical further research. Now, if we take a look at the e-learning, the most popular e-learning uh, methodology has been MOOCs, that is Massive Open Online Courses. Now, these courses are for a variety of programs and are available in India on Swayam. The cost is very little. It is convenient and flexible in the form of anytime, anywhere and anyone can learn. It is learner-friendly learning management system. 
availability of pre-recorded video lectures which can be rewind and in again and again by the student to help the understanding it helps them to improve in technical skills and most importantly it is self-paced learning so these features make it most appealing for massive open online courses which have contributed to the popularity of this across the globe. Now, if we take a look at the classroom teaching, the advantages which it possesses different from online mode, it helps in collaborative learning, group learning. Basically, a group comprises of different kinds of learners and the slow learners can learn from their peers and how they are learning, they can observe it and they also can improve their learning mechanism off and in the class. It helps them to improve social skills of communication, etc. It develops critical thinking skills based on observation and other things. They are not learning in isolation, so their observation skills are better. It helps the learner to be always stimulated. Teacher can take different measures to keep the learner stimulated. They can change their teaching methodology. They can give different kind of examples. It is instantaneous as the teacher is able to observe whether the students are following or not. Now, in case of classroom teaching, the chance of dummy feedback is very little. But in case of online teaching, dummy feedback is a big concern at present. Immediate feedback can be garnered by the teacher in the classroom by asking questions to a particular student or giving them a group activity. So it helps them to build their personality skills which are helpful for them in career building also. In classroom teaching, the teaching can be combined with different extracurricular activities also which help them to build their different skills which are required for their further career. So classroom teaching do possess some different skills which are not there in online teaching. Now, the basic purpose of the study is to find out whether it is feasible at present with the kind of in digital infrastructure which India possesses to go for e-learning or basically online learning and teaching mode. Now, these are the statistics which we have derived from Telecom Statistics India 2018 and 2019, which is released by Department of Telecommunication, Government of India. If we look at the teledensity in rural area in 2018, teledensity was 59.25% per 100 inhabitants, which declined to 57.50. Same is the case in urban, it declined from 166.64 per 100 inhabitants to 159.66 per 100 inhabitants. Number of mobile phone subscribers in crores also declined in rural and urban both. Internet subscribers in crores has shown little bit of increase. Now, number of mobile phone subscribers in crores declined, but number of internet subscribers in crores has increased. It may be on account of urban area where per hundred inhabitants the tele density is very high. That means a person is having more than one telephone or mobile phone in generally. So both those mobile phones will have different internet subscription. Internet subscribers in India per 100 inhabitants also shows that there is not that much of penetration in rural India. It was 16.41 per 100 inhabitants in 2018, which rose to 25.36 per 100 inhabitants in 2019. Now let us look at some, look at some other statistics. IISHE report, that is All India Survey on Higher Education, shows that nearly 79.8% of the total registered learners in higher education are in undergraduate courses. Majority of them are in the age group of 18 to 23. Now UNESCO says that 43% of the learners across don't have computer access. Telecom statistics says that 41% urban household has internet connectivity and 28% are rural households have internet connectivity. So with such pathetic internet connectivity and mobile phone position, it is really difficult to envisage that the online learning will provide equity and access and will comprehensively cover the masses for education. 
the telecom statistics individual internet connectivity data further makes it very bleak or stark picture andhra has just 2% household which have internet connection individually and in west bengal and bihar the situation is very very pathetic at just a half percent now mckinsey global institute's report shows that in india in 2019 only 26.2 persons had smartphone per 100 persons that means nearly 74 persons did not have smartphone the monthly data usage was 8.3 gb per month now if we go for online learning the data usage has to be almost triple of this so the affordability factor also comes into picture The Statista survey shows that only 18% were internet users in the age group of 16 to 19 years, which is basically the composition of these undergraduate students. So it shows that undergraduate students, although it looks that has internet connection, they are using internet vastly, but the internet usage in this group was just restricted to 18%. now in house survey which was done in delhi university and hyderabad university showed that 40% of the student were not able to get access to the online classes which were conducted and 30% of them complained about the cost of the data and the cost made it impossible for them to access to these online classes regularly now with such low access to internet mobile users and data usage capacity the effort of the administration to pass on the significant cost of deriving and delivering the education to masses will only eliminate the most vulnerable such as girls scheduled caste scheduled tribe other backward classes and lower income class both in rural and urban area so the whole hearted effort should be at to envisage such an approach which would be a blended way of learning in the long term such as moocs could be made optional but not compulsory way of learning and the traditional way of learning with smart board and other technological advancements to retain the attention of the student should be encouraged more so more investment in higher education with elementary education is advised for thank you myself mrs jayalakshmi i'm uh, working in purna prajna college udupi as a lecturer in commerce and management studies and uh, have registered my phd in shrinivas university mangalore now i am here to present a paper on post pandemic office life employees views so for the purpose of collecting the opinions of the employees i have conducted a survey in uh, different organizations and uh, employees so i feel happy to present a paper as you all know a pandemic is defined by who as an epidemic occurring worldwide or over a very wide area crossing international boundaries and usually affecting a large number of people because this definition says many things that is the disease outbreak will be labeled as a pandemic when it is widespread is the one point over several countries or continents that is second point and usually affecting a large number of people so what is the effect of that there are so many factors and a combination of all the factors has led to a decline in the overall volume of global economic activity forcing the world economy towards a possible recession all sections of the society including employers and employees should play a role to protect themselves and each other and help prevent further spread of this disease objectives of the study see here the objectives are one to study the problems fear and anxieties the employees are facing second one to evaluate the expectations of employees in their office in post pandemic days third one is to study and analyze the measures an employer can implement in the office to make the employees free from tension and fear fourth objective is to know the expectations of employees from the employer 
to meet the emotional changes. So with these objectives, I have conducted a survey in different uh, uh, organizations. Means that is the survey by taking the opinions of the employees who are working in different organizations. From clerks, data entry, I mean the employees uh, who are working in data entry department, few were computer operators, few were managers. So working in different offices. And here 50 employees are randomly selected in convenient sampling method. A structured question are is prepared and distributed to them to take the opinion. So as a primary data, questionnaire survey is conducted and secondly, personal interview. So I have asked a few questions and collected the data. As a secondary data, I have referred few books and articles for the purpose of this study. So now directly, I will go to the data analysis part. So this one is the table, shows the opinion of the employees regarding their problem, the changes. This um, table is self-explanatory. Look at this slide. These are the questions asked and uh, these are the what uh, their responses. See the first question is whether pandemic is causing fear and anxieties. Yes, 80 percent of the employees responded as yes, 20 percent responded as no, no change in that. So they took everything positively. Second, how do you feel of his life in post pandemic days? Only 20% responded as usual, but 80% responded as unusual. They are suffering so many problems. There is a fear, anxiety, stress to go to the office and work in a normal way. Is there any change you felt in office? 80% responded as yes, 20% responded as no. Do you feel great changes in you? Of course. 80% responded as yes, 20% responded as no. The second table shows the changes in employees life. What type of changes in employees life according to their own uh, uh, opinion? Look at this table. I got more opportunities to learn at home because there are so many technological inventions and innovations. So many platforms to learn, to communicate with others, to know the updates in office, etc. I got more time to learn something new. So 70% responded as yes, 30% responded as no. I realized my job is more comfortable at home than office. Majority of the responded, uh, respondents uh, uh, gave their opinion as yes. Work-life balance is improved. Due to reduced commitments, daily they need not go to the office. They can save that uh, traveling time. I am more comfortable using technology now because continuously they try to, to practice how to use that technology to save the time, to save the effort, etc. I have developed social contacts more because every time they can discuss with the experts and the knowledgeable persons. I get more time to spend with my family. Yes, most of us got the advantage of this. We got more time to spend with my family. Next one, how do you feel while going back to your workplace? What problems? Look at this table. I feel worried about being close to employees. Yes, if once you entered into the office, Anyway, you have to exchange your things with other employees, discussions, exchange of opinions, etc. I would like to work remotely. Yes, they can make some alternative arrangements. Very difficult to build a relationship with the colleagues, 50%, 50%. See, this table explains everything. Because uh, building relationship is possible normally. But in few offices, it is uh, 
somewhat uh, difficult in a small uh, office or organization uh, if uh, shifting arrangements are made. Okay, so so uh, difficult to, to build relationship with colleagues. Then uh, they may face uh, some communication gap between the employees also. Next table. See here, uh, multiple responses are permitted. What precautions do you want to take in office? See here, the question is asked whether they have some knowledge about the precautions to prevent COVID-19. Okay, stop shaking hands with others. 100% of the respondents are aware of that. They agree with that. Then they said execute a plan to schedule few people in person meeting. Only few officers or employers and employees can conduct a meeting and communicate that uh, uh, result to the remaining people. Want to spend less time in common areas? Yes, that can be followed. Reduce the number of in-person meetings. Total number of meetings also can be avoided. Online meetings also can be conducted. Reduce the number of team building activities. Okay, so these are the responses given by the employees. Then next question, which of the following measures do you think your company needs to take in COVID-19 pandemic? So according to the employee's point of view, a company or the employer can take the following precautionary measures. Work from home opportunities can be given to the employees to some extent. Arrange better cleaning procedures in office. Conduct online meeting and training. Wearing masks can be made compulsory. Then make possible changes in the office layout also to maintain the distance. Next table says, what you expect from your employer? Because as I said, there are so many physical and emotional problems and challenges we are facing now. So we may expect some alternative arrangement in our office. So employees' opinion, stay updated with notifications and directives are working at home, always they expect uh, the, what are the, uh, to understand what are the changes taken place in their office because uh, of some fear or anxiety because they have to take some decisions in their working place. Then employer can take steps for promoting good workplace and hygienic workplace, conduct awareness and training for precautionary measures to the employees because one employee one company may consist of so many uh, types of employees. So for the awareness purpose, they can conduct uh, some training online, then keep communication lines open always. Yes. So according to my survey, almost all, I mean majority of the employees responded that employers can make alternative arrangements. So we should behave properly and we always try to get knowledge about the prevention of COVID-19. So these are my suggestions. Avoid non-essential travel. Then practice universal screening at the gate, means at the entrance of the office or organization to keep a track of foreign to restrictions and guidance. Always it is better to study what is the rate of COVID-19 in that particular area. Then better to prevent the employee to come to office if any symptoms of COVID-19. So treating them as human beings because in most of the offices today, we are facing few difficulties. Salary cut, demotions, then uh, what uh, termination, etc. So Instead of that, some securities must be given to the employees. Then motivate the employees to work fear-free environment. Okay, these are all the suggestions to prevent such uh, problems. So to conclude, 
I can say that in the area of human resource management, one should consider the company's ability to adopt and encourage practices to improve employees' well-being. Because uh, in small-scale organizations, it's more difficult to make uh, some alternative arrangements. Uh, but in large-scale organizations, they can implement some systems. So now it is the responsibility of all to prevent COVID-19. So with this, I conclude. And uh, I would like to thank uh, the Gondavana University and uh, Chintamani Mahavidyalaya to provide an opportunity to present the paper here. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. This is Dr. K. L. Kendri, Assistant Professor and Head, Chemistry Department, SCM Ardhapur, Nanded, from Maharashtra. I am very much thankful to Gondavana University, Garchiroli, Chintavani Group of Institution, and Mahila Mahavidyalaya, Amravati, for organizing the e conference on impact of COVID-19 on various areas of global economy, science, and humanities. So, I'm presenting my paper on science because I'm from science faculty. My department is chemistry. And my paper title is Precautions During COVID-19 While Taking Chemistry Practicals. You all know there is no life without oxygen and there is no science without chemistry. So chemistry is very, very important subject from science and it touched all the aspects. I'm taking two main parts in my paper. That is precautions will be taken during practicals in lab Number one, disinfection procedure. And second one is minimizing transmission of COVID-19. So first aspect that is disinfection procedure. Clean the lab on daily basis before the practical and at the end of the practicals. Cleaning helps to removal of germs, dirt and impurities from surfaces. Cleaning does not kill germs but by removing them, it lowers their numbers and the risk of spreading infections. Disinfecting refers to using chemicals to kill germs on surfaces. This process does not necessarily clean dirty surfaces or remove germs. However, disinfecting a surface after cleaning can further lower the risk of spreading infection. Surfaces that should be disinfected regularly include before and after use that is highly touched surfaces such as chairs desktop computer keyboard light switches doorknob doors door push plates refrigerators freezer handles equipment panels switches bench top etc and pp using paper towel if possible first clean the dirty surfaces with the detergent or soap and water, then carefully apply disinfectant and wipe to evenly distribute the disinfectant. Wear disposable gloves when disinfecting surfaces and ensure the area has good ventilation, disinfectant, and leave the area untouched until the surfaces have dried. Discard the gloves after each use and clean hands immediately. Allow surfaces to air dry, discard paper towels and disinfecting wipes into the regular trash or dustbin. The disinfectant are 10% freshly prepared bleach, 70% ethanol in water. Vircon yes is a safe disinfectant. Always use cleaning product as recommended on manufacturer labels. Then second aspect, how to minimize transmission of COVID-19. The teachers, students, and lab assistants should keep six foot distance from each other while working in interactions in lab. 
If it is difficult, then take practical shifts and set up schedules. Safety guidelines should be followed all the times. Although hand sanitizer can help prevent the spread of virus, washing your hands with soap and water for at least 20 seconds is considered to be more effective. Sneeze into your elbow to reduce the spread of the virus. If you have sick or have a fever, however, you must not come to the work. Meetings should continue to be conducted remotely using Webex. Make sure to clean and disinfect all work surfaces before and after conducting practicals as current evidence suggests that COVID-19 may remain. Good morning, friends. I am Dr. Girish Pandey, Assistant Professor and Head, Department of Chemistry, NSB College, Nanded, Maharashtra. My topic is effect of COVID-19 on regular library work. Friends, previously, there became a habit of visiting library regularly in college. As we know that knowledge is always to be updated to cope up with the ever demanding situation of students, we have to upgrade our knowledge on a regular basis. To upgrade this knowledge, uh, we have to use the library and which is the best source. I used to visit library regularly in college to see reference books, journals, and other study materials. During the pandemic situation due to this COVID-19, it became very hard to go in college and to go in library because of so many problems, because we go there, we cannot maintain the situation of social distancing and uh, we, will touch, we will touch the books and that will uh, cause the problem. As we know that library gives us reading material, I was always preparing notes of my syllabus related mater material. I can get new references to the research work I can give this reference to the students of MSc classes uh, as it is uh, useful for them in the project work, which is prescribed by the uh, our uh, Swami Ramanand Tirth Maratwada University syllabus in PG fourth semester. Due to this pandemic of COVID-19 and the rules of physical distancing, we cannot go to library or handle the books, journals. So all these works became impossible. But friends, we are having one of the alternative to this is e-books and e-journals and the e-content material regarding the syllabus and the research work. We can have so many uh, conferences, workshops of the e-content. Uh, and this was very possible for me to attend all these conferences, e-webinars uh, from home. And uh, the, we can have the reference work from the Google site also. Uh, I'm just availing all these uh, material during this pandemic situation of COVID-19. Uh, so I hope this pandemic will go away and uh, we will be getting all those days back in college, going to the, the library once again, handling the books, reference books, and handling the journals which are there situated. Uh, hoping so, and hoping all of you, thank you very much. Myself, Tabeshman, I'm from Gurnana College of Pharmacy, Nagpur and I'm going to deliver a seminar on COVID-19, a blessing in disgust. First of all, introduction. Remember the Newton's third law. That is, for every action, there is equal and opposite reaction. COVID-19 is the biggest negative event for the India and Indian economy. But it will definitely be an equal and opposite positive reaction that will make a long-lasting change. COVID-19 is actually a change accelerator. As Corona has achieved in last few days, what the government could not do in many years. Let's take an overview on them. COVID-19, an overnight paradigm shift. Digital economy, 
work from home digital strong india healthy india hospitality and tourist destination manufacturing in revolution and sharp recovery are some points in the digital economy corona has helped impose digital payment on everyone increase the importance of digital payment and transaction phone pay bhim pay google pay are some apps which are used mostly for the bill payments which are just during the lockdown session government should now work proactively for shifting on digital payment and avoid paper currency uses this reduces the touching to notes and thus minimizes the chances of infection it also help in transformation thus helpful in higher revenue recognition and higher tax collection work from home work from home was just used by selected number of wide large corporations but now due to this pandemic situation work from home is normal overnight colleges industries offices are shifted to the work from home in a single night work from home can result into higher savings of individual and industry with an higher productivity it also lowers the risk of infection and pollution helps higher and easier availability of job with a lesser migration within the india digitally strong india is the another point even in such an extensive and a long lockdown this country is smoothly functioning it has proved that india's digital infrastructure is strong and well organized we just need to accelerate digitalization with innovative ideas for better life corona has tested our system and shown us gaps for the improvement healthy india a health capital for the world for over a month entire population remained inside home thus resulting in reduced pollution in environment also people maintained social distancing washing hand frequently and disinfecting areas thus the whole country get purified this is the condition will change the hygiene habits of the indians corona is creating a way towards the healthy and hygienic india we just need to improve our cleaning system and health infrastructures for health infrastructures india has to build maximum number of world class healthcare facility centers in every part of the country to transform india into health capital of the world hospitality and tourist destination most of the popular tourist locations in the world are severely impacted by the covid-19 but fortunately india has the more tourist locations and covid-19 safe and india is recovering fast thus other countries loss can be india's gain this is the best opportunity to promote indian tourism tourism is the largest employer in the world thus to boost the tourism government should subsidize air tickets to india hotel and dining rights and attracts tourist there should be a special desk in police to ensure the safety of the tourist so that foreigners should feel safe and free to tour in the india india's manufacturing revolution many of the companies having manufacturing plant in china are planning to shift their manufacturing base to india this is a very good opportunity for the indians industrial development and to become a manufacturing hub in the world the government has to do structural changes and to improve the ease of doing business in india government should subsidize the land electricity and other essentials for the company establishment india must invite foreign companies including china to invest in india this will help to increase the employment and development of states and country sharp recovery world has already heading slowly toward the recession that is decline in economic activity prior to indian pandemic situation covid-19 lockdown brought the world economy to a virtual halt that is cessation in such condition every country every country required to draw a proper strategy for the sharper and quicker recovery only time will tell which country succeed in recovery we can just hope india be that one and it look like india can few consolations that that means all is not lost despite of too much loss and declined economy there are some of the areas where the, there is benefit to the country such as oil 
agriculture telecom oil oil prices has dropped from 70 us dollars per barrel barrel to 25 us dollars per barrel but the government intelligently don't pass this benefit to the con consumer directly a rough estimate of saving is expected to around 3 lakh crore which is approximately 1.5% of the gdp this revenue can be used for the post covid recovery of india agriculture 70% of the india's population depend on the agriculture fortunately agriculture sector is not much impacted the government is emptying half of their grain storage during the covid 19 lockdown and now government can procure more from the farmer and can pay more helping the revival of rural demand and economy telecom telecom industry thanks to corona because the telecom in industry and the internet companies having good days as the work from home becoming a norm it has changed the fortune of these industries the company is working with social media and online conferences which helps the telecom industry to grow reference thank you Good morning, everyone. Myself and Jayman, Assistant Professor, Department of Commerce and Management, in Sarala Devi Satish Chandra Agarwal Government Preparatory Autonomous College, Bellary, which is affi affiliated with Vijayanagara Shri Krishna Devaraya University, Bellary. I am very glad to inform that the two days. interdisciplinary international e conference on impact of covid-19 on various area areas of global economy science and humanities which has been collaboratively organized by gondavana university mahila mahavidyalaya and chintamani college of commerce in that e conference international interdisciplinary e conference i am going to present a paper presentation on new theories of management after lockdown this is my paper presentation topic where i am going to try to tell about what exactly the new theories of management my objectives of this paper is an overview of management theories and as well as aim to consolidate the management theories this is my objective here today friends we are hearing uh, we, we know that we are facing a pandemic situation where we are trying to overcome with that pandemic situation that is covid 19 a covid 19 is a severe acute respiratory syndrome where it can be spread by one person to the another now as of now we do facing more than 4.13 billion people have been recovered as of now that is june and then it 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 resulting more than it, it made them to everybody need to think about what role the prevention measures need to be taken out in that respect here it is a situation where everybody need to take care of our health and take care of our environment also in that respect as of now we are in the phase of lockdown stage of stage or a phase of quip which has which has been scheduled is it is going to end at 30th june of 2020 here as we know that the management is nothing but a in previous days or in olden days or in inception stage days management is nothing but an a work has to be done to others but that perception regarding in regards to that management has been changed nowadays here work together is a new mantra for success of every individual or any business or any country success in that respect here we need to understand what exactly the management and we need to know that what are all the important evolution thoughts we need to understand what are all the important stages of evolution of management thought that is management evolution thought in that respect we do come across pre scientific management period it has been 
and then we do come across the classical theory then we have a neo classical theory and we bureaucratic model after knowing all these evolution stages we need to understand what exactly the management theory is here in general management theory is nothing but that it need to be focused on again it need to be focused and it need to be communicate and it need to be evaluate the exact situation what role the provisions and what role the solutions we are going to get or we are going to find out in that respect in such scenario we need to understand there are so many or uh, there are essentially 11 essential management theories as of now we do come across by the important management gurus they contributed towards the management as of now in that respect we do come across the first management theory that is systems theory and then we do come across principles of administrative management and then we have bureaucratic management and scientific management theory x and y and then we have elton moyer's human relations theory then classical management theory then we do come across a contingency management theory then modern management theory again we have quantitative management theory then organization has a learning system these are all the some important management theories which has been contributed by the epistemic or known management gurus then after knowing all these important management theories i try to consolidate the new management theory that is harmonial management theory here it concluded the version of all the above management theories this is the theory which helps to access the need or and requirement of the physical facilities and self of an individual when individuals are in right path of ethical value based then it leads to harmony in the individual again if one individual get got his harmony in his life then automatically it will leads to a harmony in family then it leads to an harmony in society and as a whole a globe can be automatically harmonious then in that respect the ethical values plays a very important role where we are not following this ethical sense or ethical sense in our daily life that has to be implemented by ourselves that is what i want to convey in this paper presentation thank you for a listening active listening of my presentation thank you one and all thank you so much hello everyone today i am going to present paper on impact of covid-19 on indian education system present status and future perspective hi myself bhushan indra singh mamte rajput assistant professor dnc vp lmc college of social work jalgaon as we all aware about the pandemic covid-19 has shattered the old health beliefs and system of every sector of the world nature has shown us again nothing is permanent indian education system is badly hampered by covid-19 due to its unpreparedness for such disaster it was not it was tremendous and unplanned change it is estimated that around 32 crore student have been affected all educational activities were paused when lockdown was declared indian teacher students have adapted the digital medium as an alternative to traditional method it is not like that indian teachers and students were unaware or distant from digital education but frequency of using digital method was low at present indian education system has adopted new ways of teaching learning and will survive and bring major changes in the future objective of the present paper are the to find the positive aspect of indian education system in covid-19 crisis to find negative aspect of online digital education system in india 
to analyze the present situation of Indian education system and its future. Let's talk about the positive aspect of Indian system in COVID-19 crisis. As all are aware, the education system was hampered and it was paused. But later on, student and teacher has started to use online apps, mobile, laptops, and all the equipment which can be used for online teaching and learning process. So it was good initiative taken by the all the small from the Jilla Pashi school to higher education institute has adopted online teaching method. So first of positive aspect is that there was a will to learn. It is not like that they don't want it to learn. It was the will during the crisis of COVID-19, there was a will to learn. Second positive aspect is flexibility. Very few Indian students have laptops and other gadgets, but students shift to mobile and use as a learning resource material. Third, teacher had faced havoc of webinars, but they had attended and updated their Negative aspect of Indian education system in COVID-19 are some negative aspects which may be such as a, uh, there is no um, subjectivity or what we call, call engagement, proper engagement was there by student teacher. It was rather a formality. Present state of Indian education system, lockdown has been removed, process of unlock and has been started. So there is still uh, confusion among the many institutions and uh, uh, UGC and government about how to conduct the exam or just promote to the student. Future perspective on Indian education system, Indian education is going to transform radically, but problem is that we should keep in mind that we are dealing with the human, we are not dealing with the machine. Many critics say that it may be the post-university area, but for me in India, there is not such a phase has been come. It will take at least 20 to 30 years to uh, start the post-university era in India. There are suggestions, uh, many economic backward student can't offer mobile, so data pack should be uh, low at the low cost, training for teachers, students should be organized. Conclusion, many scholars mention a post-unity phase of education, but in the context of India, it will be too hurry to say like that. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Myself, Dr. Anuradha Gupta, BDJ and Degree College, Agra, HOD of Economics Department. Aaj mein is webinar ke liye आयोजन समिति के सभी सदस्यों को बधाई देना चाहती हूं और यह मेरा परम सौभाग्य है कि मुझे यहां पर अपना पेपर प्रेजेंट करने का मौका प्रदान किया गया उसके लिए आयोजन समिति के सभी सदस्यों का जय हिंद जय भारत वार्म ग्रीटिंग्स टू ऑल माय सेल्फ सैंड्रा जोस एंड माय वर्क एंटाइटल्ड Molecular docking studies of family K member 2 potassium channel protein against COVID-19 and pneumonia was carried out under the supervision of Dr. G.M. Namla, Wales University. Globally, there are more than 4 million COVID-19 patients, while pneumonia accounts for about 15% of deaths of children below 5 years. And in this study, SARS-CoV main protease, as well as NSP, then the cell cycle regulator of streptococcus pneumonia, were docked for their antimicrobial activities using autodoc winner. The amount of surface area at the interface and the hydrophobicity indices were also calculated. Among the chosen proteins, that was about 30 of them, we concluded that potassium channels were very effective. And from that, we arrived at the conclusion that potassium channel protein that was coded by the gene KCNK, which was a transport gene in a transport protein in Homo sapiens, was very effective, followed by Arabidopsis thaliana potassium channel protein that was CAT1, coded by the gene CAT1. Methodology, protein selection was done by PDB and PyMode. Molecular docking, which was which gave you a cluster size as well as energy-based scores that was performed using Piper as well as Autodoc winner. Protein imaging, interacting residue rendering, and chain determination using PyMode and uh, Discovery Studio. Moving on to the results, the results, as I said, 
the already recognized as regulators of apoptosis were these potassium channels, and these were give, gave the highest uh, values of energy scores and highest, I mean, yes, the least negative values. And other proteins were catalase and piacin 2 from pseudomonas And then so there, are, there are several uh, plant proteins also which were identified for their potential action, such as wound-induced proteinase inhibitor 2 from tomato, beta-GB1 from jingophyta division, and yeast protein that is phytase. Here you can see the admin properties of two subtypes of potassium channel proteins, one from plant, another from human, that were identified for their log p value and etc. So uh, a number of drugs have been withdrawn for because of the last stage clinical trials due to the cardiotoxic effects. So here you can see the human intestinal absorption rate, that is HIA, which is very high for CAT1, which means it is very effective and it has the least cardiotoxic values. Now, uh, log p value, which is very negative here, means that the compound has high affinity for the aqueous phase. Then HERG inhibition gave a very low risk for both of them. And here you can also notice the polar binding, which is caused by lysine, glycine, glutamine. And uh, the, we, we studied the interaction and we found multiple bonding, uh, which, which represented a very high affinity. Now, hydrophobicity analysis of channel subtypes by docking also revealed very negative value for K2. And then uh, we uh, moved on to protein-protein interface analysis, which gave you inter inter interface surface area in Armstrong square units as well as HP indices. And that those values were also observed as very high for both uh, SARS-CoV as well as pneumonia. Now the active sites, whether the nature of the active sites, that is whether it is hydrophilic or hydrophobic, that was determined using um, PDB as well as Discovery Studio. And then uh, we came to a conclusion that the active sites of SARS-CoV, whether it is main protease or non-structural protein, it was highly hydrophilic in nature, while the active site of K2 was highly uh, hydrophobic in nature. That could be revealed by the scale. You can see here, the higher the brownish it is, it means it is highly hydrophobic, while the blue color denotes hydrophilicity. So we came to a conclusion that the active pockets of both of them was having this hydrophilic and hydrophobic reaction uh, or the interaction, and that was revealed by the scores that the docking scores are given at the top. So that means uh, the docking scores, which was highly negative in value, which means that the major uh, interaction between them was hydrophilic and hydrophobicity. So that was one of the major conclusions. Some other conclusions included that arginine, tyrosine, asparagine are the major amino acids that interacted between the chains. And then CAT1 was highly safe when we compare it to K2, but both were at par in each other uh, when we check the toxicity values or other admin properties which prefer their use in the industry uh, for the current scenario. Uh, so the cluster size ranking was also given, uh, which means the interface energies and HP indices uh, value can be correlated with the cluster size and come to a conclusion regarding it. Now the future scopes of this study is obviously there can be many other homology modeling and other virtual screening techniques which could reveal more about the action mechanisms of these proteins, while in vivo and in vitro assays could confirm the major activity and then uh, could be moved on to a drug repurposing model in which we can prefer old drugs for new uses like emerging diseases. So these are my references and thank you all for your patient listening. Uh, I know there are certain points which I could uh, I couldn't reveal because the paper is under publication process. In a week's time, it gets published. So uh, then we can get more information about all the other 30 proteins that were talked. So thank you all. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed the session. Thank you. Hi everyone, you are listening to Shweb Khan from Department of Chemistry, Islam College, Nagpur. And today we are going to discuss about recent development in drug discovery for COVID-19 in reference to chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine drug. We know that coronavirus has now become a pandemic to the whole world. More than 7.6 million cases have been reported with this infectious disease, resulting in more than 4 lakhs deaths across the world and still counting. 
Common symptoms include fever, cough, fatigue, shortness of breath, and loss of smell and taste. Whereas many of COVID-19 patients are asymptomatic and making it more challenging and difficult to control. According to World Health Organization, there are no available vaccine nor specific antiviral treatment for COVID-19. World Health Organization and NIH do not oppose the use of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs such as ibuprofen for COVID-19 symptoms. These are the structures of hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine which are used as a drug in treatment of coronavirus. Why chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine against COVID-19? What are the mode of action? It is recognized that SARS-CoV-2 having 76% amino acid homology like other SARS-CoV. Hence, assuming that it follows the similar kind of mechanism like SARS-CoV virus to enter into the host cell. SARS-CoV-2 has a spike protein which involves the two subunits S1 and S2. First S1 subunit is showing binding ability towards receptor ACE2 in adipose tissue, whereas the second S2 subunit is involving in membrane fusion and insertion of RNA into the cell. Hydroxychloroquine is a weak base, causes the alkalization of endosome and lysosome, inhibits the endocytosis, and also stops the fusion of endosome with lysosome. Increase in endosomal and lysosomal pH decreases endosomal and lysosomal function, so inhibits the endocytosis. Second way of hydroxychloroquine is that hydroxychloroquine is also act as zinc ionophore. Zinc ions enter into cell through plasma membrane. Zinc prohibits RNA polymerase. Increase in the concentration of a zinc decreases the viral RNA formation. The third factor is presence of silic acid on a cell membrane. Silic acid helps to bind virus and enters into the cell. Hydroxychloroquine binds to silic acid and prevents the binding of virus to silic acid. In this way, hydroxychloroquine showing its antiviral activity. So what literature says about the use of hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine? Got it et al. have reported effective use of hydroxychloroquine with azithromycin in treatment of COVID-19 with uh, and says a good recovery in the patient. This study has several limit, uh, limitations such as a small sample size, limited follow-up, exclusion of patients during treatment and specific age group. However, another French group by Molina et al. reported no clinical benefit and poor clinical outcome with this energetic treatment of azithromycin and hydroxychloroquine in coronavirus disease. They proposed that hydroxychloroquine acted as a protector for COVID-19 patients due to its antiviral and immunomodulatory effect. The maximum number of recovery or discharge was from control group and not from hydroxychloroquine treated group. Literature reveals that there are several disputes in the use of hydroxychloroquine for the treatment of COVID-19. Gautret et al. and Chen et al. supports the use of hydroxychloroquine alone or in combination with antibiotics such as azithromycin. However, more scientists like Molina et al., Nervous et al., and so many others did not support any significant effect or clinical outcome of hydroxychloroquine in treatment of COVID-19. Adverse effect. Several adverse effects associated with the use of hydroxychloroquine has been reported in the literature. Although hydroxychloroquine is less toxic than chloroquine, still it possesses some detrimental adverse effect which cannot be neglected. Some side effects in, uh, like uh, cardiac, uh, cardiac complications, QT prolongation to heart failure, neuromuscular side effects involves uh, signal conduction disorders, nightmare, depression, oscular side effects involve uh, corneal deposition, blind, uh, blindness, blurred vision, gastrointestinal side effects involve diarrhea, vomiting, abdominal cramping, nausea, abnormal liver function. Some allergic side effects also observed, some other general effects like uh, appetite loss, loss of weight also seen in the uh, patients who are using hydroxychloroquine. So in conclusion, we can say that hydroxychloroquine shows antiviral effect against different viruses. Further, its use shows immunomodulatory effect. Extreme care is required for the hydroxychloroquine treatment in pregnant women, pediatric patient and patient with com uh, comorbidity in coronavirus disease. The individual use of both these, hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin drug, are associated with QT prolongation. Misuse of hydroxychloroquine without the physician's advice should be avoided due to lack of strong evidences, which may result into one or more detrimental side effect. World Health Organization and several other countries like France, Italy, Germany has temporarily paused the clinical trials of hydroxychloroquine on 26 May 2020, owing to safety concerns. 
I would like to thank head of chemistry department and the principal of Islam College Nagpur. Thank you for listening. Good morning. <clears throat> no. This uh, work we have reported the synthesis structure of ferroelectric and magnetic properties of cement of the 0.95 BFO5 0.5 BT ceramic. So the ceramic actually the sample is prepared with the help of uh, Solgen method. Um, the content of the presentation is the introduction, the experimental uh, study, the result and discussion, and then conclusion. In introduction, uh, we have studied the literature. Uh, uh, of uh, many research uh, researchers. In that research article, it is found that the pure and the BFO BT ceramic was prepared by various methods and the uh, different properties such as structure, dielectric, magnetic, and magnetodielectric uh, properties were studied uh, by the uh, researchers. Now, the main uh, difficulty arises in the uh, preparation of this sample in pure form as uh, you know that uh, um, impurity phases are appear in the, uh, in the preparation of the sample. In our work, uh, we have reported the uh, synthesis of the sample with the help of BFO, with the help of uh, Solgen method. And the structural properties are studied by using XRT and uh, scanning electron microscopy. The phylectric and magnetic properties of the uh, as prepared sample is also studied. And this is the experimental uh, procedure which is represented in the form of flowchart. So initially, um, the bismuth oxide, ferrous nitrate, and magnesium nitrate are uh, taken as an uh, starting agent. Uh, these are mixed in the stoichiometric ratio with the water, uh, and then uh, with the help of magnetic stirrer, the concentrating is done at about 65 degrees Celsius of temperature. And uh, after some time, we get the floppy gel. Uh, then this gel, uh, this um, this gel, floppy gel is placed in an oven at about 90 degrees Celsius per ton of temperature at about four, four hours. So uh, after uh, four hours, um, the powder is uh, obtained by crushing it in with the help of agar motor. Then this powder is again placed in furnace at about 600 degrees Celsius for two hours, and then it is mixed with the bismuth nitrate. Then uh, in order to form the complex material. The complete uh, mixture is then boiled in for about 12 hours. And it is again placed in the furnace uh, for four hours uh, in order to make alkalization. And the pellet is prepared uh, with the uh, polyvinyl as a binding agent. And uh, 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 the pellets are sintered at about 870 degrees Celsius for four hours. This is the experimental procedure. Then the result and discussion. Uh, so, first uh, we uh, studied the XRD properties of this material and, uh, and the scanning electron material. So, from the XRD study, it is observed that the uh, aspergate sample um, uh, shows the uh, impurity phases. Uh, uh, so, secondary impurity phases are appeared in the sample because of the relative nature of the bismuth. The aspergate sample is uh, has proskite structure, rhomboidal structure with RPC specific. From the SEM field, it is found that uh, the non uniform grains are obtained and uh, they are having different grain size. So, this is uh, this different grain size uh, may be the because of the lattice distortion, uh, which causes this grain size, grace, uh, grain size decreases. Now, uh, this is because, as we know, that the uh, oxygen vacancies are developed and uh, that causes the rapid crystal growth. And then this is the ferroelectric response of 5% uh, of magnesium group 95 of 5 bt ceramic. Um, from this, it is clear that the um, uh, saturation polarization is about uh, uh, 1.9 uh, to 1.8 uh, microcoulomb per centimeter square, whereas the uh, remnant polarization is about 1.7 uh, microcoulomb per centimeter square. Uh, this is the magnetic properties of 5% magnetic group 95 5 ceramic. From this, it is observed that the remaining magnetization is about 0 0.3 PMU per gram. In the conclusion from uh, uh, this, it is clear that uh, we have prepared this as 0 0.95 BF 0 0.5 BT ceramic with the of solar meter. The XRD studies confirm that the, that the as, uh, as prepared sample uh, is exact perovskite and bottle structure is basically part 3C. Uh, and uh, same study showed that uh, sample has a dense structure. Uh, also, uh, the sample showed maximum polarization of about 2.4 coulomb per centimeter square. 
the magnetic hysteresis demonstrates that the enhanced magnetization due to the addition of uh, magnesium is observed. Thank you. Good morning to one and all present here. My name is uh, M. Ambiga Vadi. I'm from Tamil Nadu. I'm working as the Assistant Professor, Department of English at Sri Ram Nalamani or the War College of Arts and Science, Tengasi District. Uh, my paper presentation topic is Impact of COVID-19 on Agriculture and Farm. The impact of COVID-19 on the agriculture and farm is no doubt devastating. No field has escaped its impact. COVID-19 impact on agriculture and farm is complex. Uh, it's trouble. It uh, it's affect the uh, farmer and agri agriculture field and affect the agriculture chain also. The main problem in agriculture is labor availability because all the people are fear of corona. Uh, that means COVID-19 and also inability to, uh, inability to access uh, market for produce. So it's a main problem among the farmers and the end of the lockdown will not end of the problem of the farmers. The most important problem or issue of farmers have to overcome uh, overcome the debt, uh, overcome uh, so much is the problem of repaying their crop loans and gold loans at least for those who have borrowed uh, from the bank. Uh, crop loans are repaid between uh, May and April and the fresh loan uh, is granted on the onset of a new season. But now it's a, now it is a confused, uh, confusion, confused situation uh, for the farmers. And for the new season, farmers are forced uh, to, uh, to borrow money uh, from the informal se sectors at high rates of interest. So it's a big problem uh, among the farmers and the agriculture field owners uh, and, and the agriculture uh, field, uh, field owners. Uh, for instance, uh, my own life also, uh, my father is a farmer and he, he's uh, now 60 years old now. Uh, he done agriculture throughout his life. Last three months, that means from March 23rd, he is in a uh, house without going outside. So it is a big problem uh, for me, uh, particularly to repair our uh, tractor load. So the impact of COVID-19 on impact, uh, sorry, the impact of COVID-19 on uh, farmers is a big problem. Uh, and uh, government also help to the farmers, help the farmers, it's, it's acceptable. Uh, after the nationwide lockdown was announced, the Indian finance minister declared 1.7 trillion package mostly to protect the vulnerable sectors. That means the including the farmers uh, from any uh, adverse impact of the corona pandemic. pandemic, pandemic. So it's, uh, it's, um, uh, government uh, help the farmers and under the scheme of PM, uh, Kisan released 2,000 rupees to bank accounts of farmers as uh, income support uh, under PM Kisan scheme. So it's a, it's a, um, a government help to the government help the farmers. It's an acceptable, uh, reasonable truth. Uh, Indian Council of Agriculture Research, that means ICAR, has released state-wise guidelines for farmers to be followed during the lockdown period. Uh, the Reserve Bank of uh, India, that means I, or IP, has also announced specific measures that address the burden of the debt surviving due to COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Uh, finally, uh, my end of the word is, uh, like you, I am also praying uh, for a quick uh, end to this COVID-19. I also have uh, faith that uh, stories of helping, stories of service, uh, neighbors helping neighbors and communities uh, working together uh, without social distance uh, to protect one uh, another will shine brightly across this country. So the impact of COVID-19 uh, on agriculture and farm is uh, a very dangerous one. Uh, I don't know how the farmers uh, escaped from this uh, trouble. Uh, the, from the government side, they help the farmers. Uh, so it's my presentation topic. Uh, thank you one and all for hearing my words. Thank you. Thank you so much.
good morning to one and all present here my name is uh, m ambiga vadi i am from tamil nadu i am working as a assistant professor department of english at sri ram nalamani adawa college of arts and science tengasi district uh, my paper this is was read from arts commons and science college sindhu district maharashtra state today's presentation topic is challenges in front of msmes during and after lockdown in india empirical study let's start with introduction the micro small and medium enterprise sector has emerged as highly vibrant and dynamic sector of the indian economy over the last five decades it contributes significantly in the economic and social development of the country by fostering entrepreneurship and generating largest employment opportunities at completely lower capital cost next only our agriculture msmes are complementary to large industry in ancillary units and this sector contributes contribute significantly in the inclusive industrial development of country the msmes are widening their domain across sector of the economy producing diverse range of products and services to meet demands of domestic as well as global markets minister of micro small and medium enterprises and regions a progressive msme sector are promoting growth and development of their sector including khari village and coal industries in cooperation with concerned ministries or departments state government state government and other other stakeholders through providing support to existing enterprises adopting cutting edge of scale of micro small and medium the research picture paper is designed by the objective is to collect knowledge about covid-19 pandemic virus to study impact of corona disease on micro small and medium enterprises in india to know the problem of msme during the during and after lockdown impact of covid-19 on msme is collapsing demand and access to liquidity another one is accessing inputs and managing inventory managing the work environment policy uncertainty and disrupted supply chain policy accessing emergency support and recommendation is rebuild the ecosystem think think when you change my alliances focus on finance take to social media and amplify messages take order online and deliver personally household take help from experts follow up friendly loans thank you Uh, good morning to all of you uh, i am dr abdul rahman from government pg college sambhal i want to present my paper at, entitled as covid-19 and its impact on indian economy uh, today we are living in a most dangerous atmosphere where there is a fear of corona virus everywhere it is very critical time for the entire world to save humanity uh, till now no vaccine has been developed in the world to cure for covid-19 but efforts are continuing at national and, inter and international level to cope this situation it is also very difficult to satisfy the day to day necessities of life for a lower and middle income group who have lost their jobs or work due to lockdown process because a large number of industrial or business units have been closed temporarily this pandemic of covid-19 at a large extent has created various socio economic issues and challenges for the societies and economies globally 
Therefore, it is the necessity of time to counter this pandemic, this pandemic by collective efforts and remove or reduce its negative impact on the societies and economy. Uh, various sectors of the economy, as agriculture, industry, manufacturing sector, service sectors, have been affected badly. Uh, the pandemic of COVID-19 has affected humanity mentally and physically at a large extent in every walk of life. Most of the companies or industries have suspended their activities or reduced their operations significantly. More than 45% uh, household across the country have reported less income as compared to previous year. Uh, around 14 crores Indian have lost their employment during the lockdown. Uh, the Indian economy was expected to loss over 32,000 crore every day during the first 21 days of lockdown. Uh, the government has also taken various measures to tackle the about situations, uh, to tackle about uh, problems. Uh, now, in conclusion, uh, uh, COVID-19 has affected each and every aspect of our lives, uh, either positively or negatively. No vaccine or uh, treatment has been discovered till now to face this problem. So it will be better to adopt preventive and safety measures for living with it. As it is pandemic, collaborative and coordinated efforts are urgently required to control the spread and uh, reduce its impact globally. To make the Indian economy self-reliant, the produ production of essential commodities should be at local level and tax concessions should be provided to such industries or units. Agriculture and allied sectors should be provided top priority in budget and strategic planning. The economic decisions should be taken after taking advices of an expert team of senior economists and after considering the socio-economic impact of these decisions. Education removes the darkness of the society. Therefore, the long-term investment in education and health sector is necessary to make the people of nation educated and healthy. By collecting uh, a comprehensive data of migrant labor or workers, the government should try to provide employment to them at local level. The government should continue to help farmers. Financial packages certainly would provide necessary support to agriculture sector to get back on the way of recovery. The government should provide necessary supports to the startup and, the, and other industries producing basic necessities of life. The, law, uh, the raw materials or the products which we are importing from foreign countries, we should try to search uh, raw materials and resources available and manufacture those products within the country. All the responsible citizens must follow the principles of equity, honesty, and justice, and should provide their contributions to make the country corruption-free, safe, healthy, and self-reliant. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Myself, Sanjay Kumar, MPL scholar, Dr. C.V. Raman University, Bilaspur, presentation on role of digital education system during and post COVID-19. Introduction, the petrifying and serve impact of COVID-19 has shaken the world to its core code. Second point, government around the world have temporarily closed education institution in an attempt to contain the spread of the COVID-19. Number three, in India to the government has a part of nationwide lockdown has closed all education institution as the consequences of which, uh, which learners ran, uh, ranging from school going children to post-graduate students are affected. India, the largest education system in the world. Number one, the country has more than 1.4 million schools. Number two, our 227 million students enrolled. And number three, more than 36,000 higher education institutes. Number four, India has one of the largest higher education system in the world. Uh, promotion of e-learning. Nationwide closures are impacting our 91% of the world's students' population. A complete revolution in the way we learn today has been brought about of technology. E-students get in contact 
with the world class education which is not easy to impact by the traditional white chalk white chalk and blackboard methods of teaching uh, online distant learning program give a great opportunity to able high quality learning with the help of internet connectivity uh, challenging in digital learning Digi digital learning has many advantages in itself like digital learning has no physical boundaries it has more learning engagement experience rather than the traditional learning it is also cost effective and students get to learn in the confines of their comfort zone global online education has made with some success in the case of india we still have a long way to go before digital learning is seen as mainstream education because student students live in urban areas have the facility to uh, uh, option uh, for digital education however rural, uh, rural area students do not have the required infrastructure nor and financially strong to able the resources required for digital education conclusions due to the outbreak of the covid-19 the world from home wfh culture in booming in india not only education institution institutes in india have opted for an online platform like zoom app whatsapp to stay connected with their students who are learning from their homes covid-19 outbreak has boosted the e-learning process abruptly in india good afternoon one and all effect of today's my oral presentation topic is effect of land degradation on and biodiversity in nagpur city i am dr seema kadu department of zoology shivaji science college nagpur topic this topic is very important topic where ants are important in below ground processes through the alteration of physical and chemical environment and through their effects on plant and microorganism but today this scenario is totally different where the urban area shows maximum degradation of lands and ultimately these processes degrade the nesting habitat of and so here the abstract shows important of ant in biogeochemical processes and pedological processes here introduction is related to the study where integrated landscape approach to promote research in human modified landscape affects directly on the dynamics and conservation of biodiversity of ant here myself dr pompi ghosh with dr devabrat das is going to present one paper on start naran shah assistant professor from paniyati mahavidyalaya kolkata the title of my paper is health practices to combat corona virus disease that is covid 19 pandemic we know covid 19 is a communicable disease due to sars cov 2 that is severe acute respiratory syndrome corona virus disease 2 Its first out outbreak began at Wuhan, China, in December 2019. Then it spread throughout the world. Common symptoms of COVID-19 are common cold and fever, dry cough, nasal congestion, breathing trouble, running nose, sore throat, diarrhea. But most of the infected people, that is about 80 percent, are asymptomatic carrier. Only one out of six people becomes seriously ill. Many older people, people with comorbidity, and children below 10 years of age are likely to develop serious illness. On 11th March 2020, WHO declared COVID-19 as a pandemic when it spread more than 100 countries of the world. Although absolute number of infected people is very high, but the fatality rate is only 3.44%. The present study is to highlight. 
on different health practices along with lifestyle management by intake of different potent plant compounds to develop body immune to combat COVID-19. In case of COVID-19, like other viral fever or viral infection, it takes 14 to 21 days to get cured. 80% cases are asymptomatic carrier, as I have already told, and the rest 20% get severe infection, among which 15% gets cured and recover with symptomatic treatment. Only 5% patient faces severe problem who have comorbid factors like diabetic, hypertension, heart and kidney disease, etc. The present paper is aiming to Ayurvedic treatment and management to combat COVID-19. We know since very ancient time, Ayurvedic herbs have been used as a natural treatment for various illness and also for viral infection. Various herbs has a lot of concentration of potent plant compounds which have ability to fight viruses and many Ayurvedic practitioners have prescribed natural medicine to be used in case of viral infection. Here, we are discussing now about the different Ayurvedic antiviral herbs. These are basil or tulsi, garlic, oregano, phenol, pudina, yashtimethu, ginger, ashwagandha, guduchi. Now, first of all, basil or tulsi, it contains chemicals and which has the ability to fight against viral infection like hepatitis B enterovirus. And it is also beneficial in common cold and cough and cold. Supplementing with 300 milligram of holy basil extract significantly increased level of uh, T cell, natural killer cell, both of which are immune cell to help protect and defend our body from viral infection. Number two is garlic, which is known for their production of organosulfur compounds, which possesses interesting biological and pharmacological properties. Garlic appears to enhance the functioning of the immune system by stimulating certain cell types. And it, is, it has a great role for building our immunity. Number three is oregano which is a common herbs used in pizza and it belongs from the mint family. It contains few compounds which offer antiviral properties. Number four antiviral herbs is phenol. It is like lycodice flavored plant that may fight certain viruses. And it, is, uh, it has a great efficacy in para-influenza 3 which causes respiratory infection. Number five antiviral herbs is peppermint or pudina, which is commonly used in teas and uh, along uh, it extracts, treats viral infection naturally. Its components like menthol and rosemarinic acid have antiviral and anti-inflammatory activity. It has shown a great result in the treatment of respiratory infection. Number six is Eshtimodhu. Its compound have powerful antiviral properties and it also helps to, uh, uh, in case of severe acute respiratory syndrome, that is SARS-CoV-2, which causes a serious types of pneumonia. Number seven antiviral herbs is ginger and specific compounds of in ginger that helps uh, to inhibit the viral replication and prevents viruses from entering the host cell. And ginger extract has antiviral effects against avian influenza, RSV, which is comparable to human norovirus. Number eight antiviral herbs is ashwagandha. The hydroalcoholic extract of ashwagandha roots showed the inhibition of virus at maximum 99.9% .9 in the highest monotoxic concentration and it also has a promising anti-influenza property and, how, and has also shown great result in improving immunity and it is also known as Russian Chikisha in Ayurveda. 
and the number nine, the final antiviral hops is Guduchi. The components that decrease the recurrent resistance of HIV virus to antiretroviral therapy and improve the outcome of the therapy. And the components derived from the plant that helps uh, to, it is acts as a anti-inflammatory, anti-diabetic, anti-periodic, anti-spasmodic, antioxidant, anti-allergic, anti-stress, anti-leprotic, anti-malaria. And it, it, it has huge importance to treat the viral infection. Now, let us see the general measures to combat the COVID-19. It is prescribed that drink water throughout the day and it should be warm water. Daily practice of Yogasana, Pranayam and meditation for at least 30 minutes as advised by the Ministry of Ayush. Spices like Holdi, Jeera, Dhaniya, Lashun are recommended in cooking. Number four, take Chavanpras of 10 grams in the morning and the diabetic patient should take sugar-free Chavanpras. Drink herbal tree made from Tulsi, Dalchini, Kali Mirch, dry ginger, raisin once or twice a day. And if necessary, add jaggery, that is natural sugar or fresh lemon juice to your taste if needed. And next is the golden milk, that is the milk with the combination of turmeric of half teaspoon and the milk should be hot and then the quantity is 150 ml and if possible twice a day it will help to uh, to combat or to resist or to uh, build up immunity against the viral infection the other ayurvedic procedures are nasal application of sesam oil or coconut oil in the both nostrils in the morning and evening the next one is the oil pooling therapy uh, it is suggested that take one tablespoon of sesame or coconut oil in the mouth but do not drink squeeze in the mouth for two to three minutes and split it off followed by warm water rinse and one of the most vital uh, vital practices steam and inhalation with fresh pudina leaves or ajwan can be practiced once in a day it is very beneficial for us we can take the lavang, that is clove powder, mixed with natural sugar or honey, can be taken twice or thrice a day in case of cough or throat irritation. And the final measures is, uh, the, uh, and the final, if the problem is critical or severe, then obviously one should go to the practice health practitioners for his opinion or the uh, prescribed symptomatic treatment. And now, finally, I may conclude that no panic at all, just act wisely. Don't lose hope to leave. Thank you all. Hello, everybody. I am Dr. Neeta Rani Ramesh Jaiswal, Associate Professor, Department of Zoology, Yeshwin Mahavidyalaya, London, Maharashtra. My topic of presentation is impact of COVID-19 on education and training. Due to pandemic of covid 19 students are afraid it just impossible for colleges to maintain the social distancing there is a problem of sanitation even students are aware about using masks wash basins at the entrance of each classroom for washing hands is one of the problem for higher education institutes although for such circumstances technology enhanced learning is one of the boon for students. Online education is one of the solution for higher education institutes. Online education is in its bloom. Nowadays, there is a digital divide between urban and rural areas. We are getting appropriate speed of internet of 4G. In some villages, we are getting appropriate speed of internet, but in remote areas, students and faculties are not getting sufficient speed of internet. There is another problem. There is another problem of configuration of mobiles of students. Some students may not 
well featured have may not well, have well featured mobiles we may hope the problems may be tackled in education and training sectors we are solving the problems well online lectures are well created by teachers in higher education in sciences and technology education practical base is important virtual lab is one of the ray of hope for students in laboratory practical can be handled and virtually it can be understood by students in some extent virtual laboratory may tackle the problem universities and colleges in india are organizing webinars online conferences and workshops in these programs faculties and students are imparted new knowledge about the subject theories and trends such programs are available online these programs are available for massive number of participants these programs are availed without fees for students and teachers and teachers ugc human resource development center in india are organizing online short term courses refresher courses and faculty development programs in these courses are one of the essential criteria for career advance schemes before covid 19 epidemic faculties were attending these courses physically sometimes the leave for attending these courses were not sanctioned by the authorities nowadays such courses are available for online and faculties are attending these courses will willingly even though covid 19 epidemic epidemic is not good anyway but we are ourselves with the help of technology technology enhanced learning is one of the best way to tackle such crisis let us fortify the education and training sector with the help of technology thank you the paper i am presenting today is a study on impact of covid-19 on digital marketing the global pandemic of covid-19 is you know having a lot of impact on various sectors in the economy as well as in other sectors also similarly the digital marketing and advertising sector also has been a market on fast track and paved the way for for Pinaran Shah, Assistant Prof. Hello, everyone. The paper I am presenting today is a study on impact of COVID-19 on digital marketing. The global pandemic of COVID-19 is. Myself, Doctor. Myself, Doctor Pompey Ghosh. Myself, Doctor Pompey Ghosh, with Doctor Devamrata Das, is going to present one paper on studies on M antigen status on Drosera barmani and its ecological status in dry deciduous forest of West Bengal. Tropical sandhu that is Drosera barmani is called as Surya Shishi in Bengali, and this plant is found in various parts of our state, from highland to lowland, and used by tribal people for medicinal purposes. Hello, everyone. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, this research work, which uh, we have carried out. Uh, the title of the study is "Impact of COVID-19 on Mind and Body of Employee." I am Dr. Ravindra Day. I am a professor with Davis School of Management and Research. I head OB and HR over there. With me, I have Neha Disuza and Blovin Kumar, who are students of uh, MMS uh, HR specialization. The way we are going to talk about is this is the flow of the presentation. We will first talk about the relevance of this study. Then we have literature review, research problem and hypothesis, research method and results. and we will also discuss in terms of the results in princes and last we will talk about the future study which can be carried out and the conclusion of the whole thing uh all of you might be remembering uh march 24 2020 when our prime minister uh, had announced that there will be 21 days lockdown due to uh, controlling the covid-19 epidemic and since then uh, we are at end of june 2020 still the phase 5 of lockdown is continuing 
life came to a halt. Organizations got impacted. Many employees. Can be carried out and the conclusion of the whole thing came to a halt organizations got impacted many employees started facing stress mental health of employees started getting affected we thought that we will carry out the study and uh, the purpose of this particular study was to investigate the impact of covid 19 on mental health of employees we wanted to see how to factors such as job insecurity and financial strain affects employee well-being what are the coping abilities of employee and also we wanted to see what are the initiative taken by the organization to mitigate the negative impact if any so first and foremost we wanted to carry out a literature review Friends, wait for 10 minutes, then we will start once again. Till then, I repeat some videos for you. सुरक्षित रहा घरीच रहा My paper title is A Study on Advantages and Disadvantages of Online Teaching During COVID-19 with Special Reference to Bangalore University Students Abstract The education system is transforming from traditional method to online teaching programs due to COVID-19 educational institutions were shut down, facing them to shift towards online mode of teaching and adopting the tools and techniques of virtual classroom. This study attempts to analyze the various advantages and disadvantages of adopting online teaching methods and also the study reviews various available platforms and indicate government statistic platforms and their usage during the period of COVID-19 pandemic. The lesson learned from COVID-19 pandemic will force a generation of new system, laws and regulation, platforms and solution for, for a future cases when the government and education will be more prepared than today. Introduction. The Indian education system is generally based on regular and traditional classroom method with a limited scope for online mode of teaching due to lockdown caused by COVID-19 pandemic. The government suggested the online mode of teaching. Currently, various methods for conducting online classes are available such as video conferencing, video recording and sharing, audio notes, PPT, etc. With the help of various software and smartphone applications, namely Google Meet, Zoom, Google Classroom, Microsoft Teams, etc. In India, most of the students are facing network and internet connectivity issue, lack of suitable electronic gadgets, and many other students are struggling to use software and application because of lack of knowledge in ICT. In online mode of teaching, students can get classes from their home safely and uh, they can get a various top-rated courses and classes for a free of cost or a minimum cost. 
Most of the faculties, students and administrators are facing many problems because they were adjusted to the traditional classroom method. In the initial stages of adopting online method of teaching, it is very important to provide development programs and training on how to access and adapt the various tools and techniques of online teaching. Objectives. To identify the online teaching platforms and their usage, to know the difficulties faced by students with online learning during COVID-19 pandemic, to identify the advantages and disadvantages of online teaching mode. Scope of the study. Scope of the study is related to the analysis of advantages and disadvantages of online teaching during COVID-19 pandemic with a special reference to Mangalore University students. Research design. The study includes both primary and secondary data. The primary data is collected through structured questionnaire method from 100 students from various colleges of, colleges of Mangalore University. The secondary data is collected from various published sources such as journals, newspapers, websites, etc. Limitation of the study. The study is limited to Mangalore University students only. The study is limited to 100 responses only. Time constraints while collecting data. It is not preferable to generalize all the data from this study. Online teaching. Online mode of teaching can be defined as education that takes place over the internet. It is also called e-learning. Online teaching is electronically supported learning through the internet and other electronic devices for teacher a student interaction and dis distribution of class materials. Various educational institutions are making use of different online teaching tools and techniques such as Google Meet, Google Classroom, Zoom, Cisco Webex, Microsoft Teams and website like Webinar Jam, Testmos, Edmodo, TED and also social networking applications like WhatsApp and Telegram for communicating and delivering material. The outbreak of COVID-19 has greatly impacted the education system and made it compulsory for all the education institutions to use online mode of teaching. Tools and techniques of online teaching. First one, Google Meet. Google Meet is a video communication service developed by Google. It is used for conducting online live video classes. Google Classroom. Google Classroom is a free web service developed by Google for education institutions that aims to simplify creating, distributing, and grading assignments. The primary purpose of Google Classroom is to streamline the process of sharing files between faculties and students. Next, Zoom. Zoom application is used for video conferencing and it is developed by American communication technology company. It provides video telephony and other online chat service through a cloud P2P software platform. Cisco Webex. Cisco Webex is an American company that develops sales web conferencing, video conferencing application. Cisco Webex is the leading enterprise solution for video conferencing, online meetings, screen share, and webinars. Web conferencing, cloud calling, it available in Android iOS version with a limit of 100 participants. Microsoft Teams. Microsoft Teams also referred to as Simply Team is a unified communication and collaboration platform that combines persistence workplace chart, video meetings, file storage, and uh, application integration. It is only for Microsoft Office 365 subscribers and other application can use as a guest. Webinar Jam, Testmos, Edmodo, TED-Ed, and Google Farm. These are all websites for the purpose of creating classes, conducting tests, and exams, distributing study materials, and scheduling assignment. This can be used for group charts and discussion with students. These are all available for free with a limit. WhatsApp and Telegram. These are two social media applications also used for communication and group charts, distributing the study materials for free. These two applications are available for free in Android and iOS versions. Data analysis and interpretation. Demographic analysis. The above figure one shows that out of the total respondents, 32% are male and 68% are female. Advantages of online teaching. Various advantages of online teaching during COVID-19 are figure two shows that 70% of respondents are of the opinion that major advantages of online teaching method is that it enables learning from anywhere and anytime. According to figure two, 32% of respondent agrees that one of the very important advantages of online teaching is that wide variety of online information is av available for learning. These are made available by various digital libraries, online tutors, 
MOOCs, platforms, etc. Another major advantage of online teaching is its flexible class timing. About 28% of respondents also agree with this. 28% of respondents have the opinion that online teaching enables self-paced learning. In this case, online teaching students can utilize recorded classes as many times they want and uh, can understand the things at their own speed. 18% of the respondents indicate that ease of teaching the educator anytime over the internet is another advantage of teaching. In various platform facilities can be delivered recorded classes and they can interact with students and entertain their queries and doubts in the chat boxes. 14% of the respondents also of the opinion that online teaching helps to achieve quality education. Here, students can also assist uh, to classes from top educators in the country, such as Baijus, an academy, YouTube channels, etc. About 4% of the respondents think that India, Indian online courses have good scope going ahead in the future. These online courses were highlighted during COVID-19 pandemic. And various educators like uh, Udemy, Karzera, FutureLearn, etc., have also got gotten a lot of demand during this period. Disadvantages of online teaching. Various disadvantages of online teaching are 72% of the respondents' opinion that online teaching of uh, is not suitable for uh, practical classes as it requires hands on experience and physical observation to understand many of the science stream subjects. According to figure three, 68% of the respondents have identified internet network and connectivity issues as a major disadvantage of online teaching, especially for students living in remote areas of the country. According to 60% of respondent, traditional method of teaching is more effective than online mode. Thus, online phone teaching suffer from psychological acceptance on the part of student. According to figure 3, 32% of respondents suggested that online mode of teaching suffers from lack of face-to-face -face interaction between faculties and students. And 28% of students identified that non-availability of required electronic devices for conducting classes in the hands of students coming from rural areas and from poor families. 26% of respondents stated that initially they have faced problem in assessing and using various platforms such as Google Meet, Microsoft Teams, Zoom, Moodle, etc. that were used for conducting classes. Conclusion Online teaching holds the key for future education system in India. In future, online teaching will be, play a major and crucial uh, role in advancement of changing learning system, though initially both educators and students are facing problems in conducting and undergoing online teaching and learning. In the future, online mode can be uh, can become the uh, new normal. There are a few drawbacks to the system for now. However, advancement in this field can easily ensure effective implementation of online learning management system in times of uh, times to come. Thank you. Namaste. I am Dr. Parago Shukurde from Sipna College of Engineering and Technology, Amrauti, going to present my research paper on economic impact of COVID-19 on tourism industry in Amrauti district. Before the pandemic of COVID-19, tourism industry counted as one of the fastest and biggest growing industries. Now in the COVID-19 phase, the most affected and directly impacted industry is the only industry which is tourism industry. In the last decade, this tourism industry shows tremendous expansion and progress worldwide and in India also. The analysis of Indian Brand Equity Foundation suggests that the total contribution by travel and tourism sector to India's GDP is expected to increase from rupees 15.25 lakh crore in 2017 to 32.05 lakh crore in 2028. If we investigate, the Indian, through the Indian perspective, the economic opportunities in rural sector tourism can be improved by the tourism industry through maximizing the employment, self-employment, formal opportunities, and most important is through participation. But all these estimates and thoughts are removed before the pandemic COVID-19. The COVID-19 changed the overall scenario of the world economy and tourism industry is not an exception. The World Bank and credit rating agencies have downgraded the India's growth 
for the fiscal year 2021. Employment rose from 6.7% on 15 March to 26% on 19th April 2020. But as of now, Maharashtra is moving forward with COVID-19 and it starts its, its mission begin again to bring the economy on the right track. Hence, the, the research study tries to identify the economic impact of COVID-19 through an effect on direct and indirect contribution. Here, the first analysis shows that maximum number of local businesses having more than 60% sales generated by the tourism who pays on rent and different rates pays tax also, corporation fees also, on bills also, and now this overall business is totally stopped. It shows that the significance of COVID-19 is affecting the economy of tourism industry. In second analysis also, maximum local businesses whose sales generated by the tourism is more than 60% purchase the raw material daily and whose businesses are 30 to 60 percent depends on the tourism purchase the raw material all weekly now they are going to be stopped their weekly purchasing from the other districts or other nearer talukas also as this third analysis also shows that maximum respondents who are going to purchase their raw material from nearer talukas nearer districts out of the districts also they are going to stop their transactions because of this going covid 19 pandemic and it shows that there is a huge impact on this tourism economy on uh, because of this COVID-19. Here, it can conclude that COVID-19 pandemic proves a disaster for the tourism industry economy. As the government initiate their uh, mission begin again without starting the tourism industry, which is not going to be economically affordable and it is not a long-term solution. As the tourism industry was one of the fastest growing and sustainable industries in India, a special relief package for this sector has to be provided by the government. But most important aspect other than the relief package is the economy from the tourism industry in India is still unrecognized. Very few part of the economy from the tourism industry is recognized and explore. Pandemic COVID-19 brings an opportunity to make the tourism industry more organized, sustainable, refined, and educated, and better culture. It is, it is the most important necessity of the hour that sustainable operating procedure for the tourism industry should need to be developed and to make the tourism industry economically viable. And this SOP should be uniform for the nation according to the nature of the tourism destinations. Thank you. Good morning to you all. This is Kalpana from Molecular Cloning Laboratory, Department of Biosciences and Sericulture, Sri Padmavati Mahila Vishwavich Alayam Tirupati. Today I am going to present one of my research component, Computational and Structural Studies of Ligand and Binding Domain of Exon Receptor of Helcoverpa Armigera, a serious Lepidopteran pest. I am going to cover this content in this presentation, Introduction, Materials and Methodology, Results and Discussion, Conclusion. Introduction, Helcoverpa armigera, which is also called as cotton ball worm. It is majorly affect on crops like cotton, corn, and vegetables in India. It causes huge economic loss by affecting yield of many crops throughout Asia. But recent, recent research studies revealed that expression of cry one AC gene from bacillus thuringiensis suppresses the Helcoverpa armigera. But field evolved studies from China also revealed that Helcoverpa armigera getting resistance against this cry one AC. This made researchers to find out new ways to suppress this Helcoverpa armigera pest. So they concentrated on the Ectison receptor. Insect, mo insect molting and metamorphosis is regulated by ectisteroid hormones like 20 hydroxy ectisone, a steroid hormone that binds to ectisone receptor. Ectisone receptor is a nuclear receptor present only in invertebrates. It is a non covalent heterodimer of group two, two proteins. Ectisone receptor ligand binding domain and ultra spherical protein. It plays a central role in the expression network of genes, the development and the phylum arthropoda. Hence, ECR has been focused as a significant choice for insect pest control sterilization. 
in addition adhesion receptor is the target of the environmentally safe which acyl hydrogen insecticide used again as pest such as caterpillars that causes severe damage to agriculture the knowledge of detailed structure organization is crucial in understanding the role of protein in the cell and the related molecular mechanisms the present work is on in silico studies on the present work is focused on in silico studies on adhesion receptor of helicoverpa armigera which is a major devastating pest in india materials and methods first of all i retrieved the sequence adhesion receptor sequence protein sequence of helicoverpa armigera from ncbi and and then i submitted and then sub, submitted the sequence to blast program to identify the homologous protein structures against this protein sequence after that i submitted this sequence to multiple sequence alignment tools to identify the conservation conserve regions between that protein and the homologs of homologs obtained from the blast program after that phylo i have done the phylogenetic analysis phylogenetic analysis was done for checking evolutionary relation between this adhesion receptor protein of helicoverpa armigera with the cluster of homologous obtained by blast output so here i use the clustalex program in clustalex also i use this unweighted pair group method with arithmetic mean upgma method to, to construct the phylogenetic trees after that primary structure analysis was done by using plot param to the ecr adhesion receptor protein analysis so in this i identified the molecular weight of protein sequence theoretical pi aliphatic index and grand average of hydropathicity uh, all these are calculated by using the proto param then secondary structure analysis secondary structure analysis is done by using geo method geo or four is the one of the tool to identify the secondary structural features and the output of this program displayed in two forms one is it uh, represents secondary structure in rows helix extended or beta strand and coil and second gives the probability values of each secondary structure at each amino acid position after that the generation of three three dimensional structure of adhesion receptor for this protein modeling i used modeler 9.20 version model modeler automatically calculates a model containing all non hydrogen bonds hydrogen atoms modeler implements protein structure modeling by satisfaction of spatial restraints here i provided the alignment file having the sequences of adhesion receptor and its template to the modeler and uh, set up the program to generate 10 models so after generating the models we concluded the final model by using dope score discrete optimized protein energy the structure which has the low dope score was considered as the best model after that after generation after generation of the 3d 3d model i submitted the model for validation to check whether the up generated mod generated 3d model 3d model was reliable or not 3d model value here i use it project and proza servers to check the 3d model generated 3d model the obtained model was evaluated for structural analysis by using project and proza server project confirms the stereochemical quality of your protein structure producing a number of post scripts plots analyzing its overall and residue by residue geometry and proza proza produces a jet score if the jet score is equal to the native pdb structure then we can conclude that the generated model was reliable after that structural analysis of modeled three dimensional structure of ecr protein of helicoverpa armigera the model ecr three dimensional protein of helicoverpa armigera was submitted to cast p server to identify the binding sites and domains the output was mentioned in the results here the results and discussion so that is the ask 12085 is the accession number of adhesion receptor seek protein sequence of helicoverpa armigera which i have i which i was retrieved from the ncbi and after that this is the these are the blast results 
so this ectisol receptor shows 98.303% identity with the ectisol receptor structure of heliotis virescent structure Hello everyone, uh, I'm going to talk about uh, this research work which uh, we have carried out. Uh, the title of the study is Impact of COVID-19 on Mind and Body of Employee. I'm Dr. Ravindra Day. I'm a professor with Xavier Institute of Management and Research. I had OB and HR over there. With me, I have Neha D'Souza and Glovin Kumar, who are students of uh, MMS uh, HR specialization. The way we are going to talk about is, this is the flow of the presentation. We will first talk about the relevance of this study. Then we have yeah. literature review, research problem and hypothesis, research method and results. And we will also discuss in terms of the results, inferences. And lastly, we'll talk about the future study, which can be carried out and the conclusion of the whole thing. Uh, all of you might be remembering uh, March 24, 2020, when our Prime Minister uh, had announced that there will be 21 days lockdown due to uh, controlling the COVID-19 epidemic. And since then, uh, we are at end of June 2020, still the phase five of lockdown is continuing. Life came to an halt. Organizations got impacted. Many employees started facing stress. Mental health of employees started getting affected. We thought that we will carry out a study and uh, the purpose of this particular study was to investigate the impact of COVID-19 on mental health of employee. We wanted to see how to factor such a job insecurity and financial strain affects employee well-being. What are the coping abilities of employee? And also we wanted to see what are the initiatives taken by organization to mitigate the negative impact, if any. So first and foremost, we wanted to carry out a literature review. I will now request Neha to take it on from how did we went about doing the literature review. Thank you, sir. Hello, hello all. Uh, for the purpose of literature review, we went through a lot of papers talking about serious epidemics to get to know about the effects it had on mental health. We found out about various stressors such as financial strain, job insecurity, and another one which was important was uncertainty about the future which creates a lot of stress on one's mental health. Uh, also factors like uh, does work from home affect work-life balance comes to the fore through this. So our uh, study aims towards investigating the impact of COVID-19 along with stressors like financial strain and job insecurity, what impact it has on the mental well-being of employees. To this, we came up with our four null hypotheses, which are as follows. The first one being coping resilience does not positively correlate to current mental well-being. Work-life balance does not positively correlate to mental well-being. Financial strain and job insecurity do not negatively correlate to current mental well-being. And the last one being financial strain and job insecurity do not positively correlate to psychological distress. I now hand it over to Globin who will take us through the data analysis process. Thanks. So we collected a sample of our sample size was 149 working individuals of 77 males and 72 females with a median age being between 26 and 40 years of age. The next slide shows you some st summary statistics regarding uh, coping abilities, mental well-being. Uh, the next slide shows you statistics regarding work-life balance, financial strain, percentage of the a sample who are prone to SI, which stands for serious mental illness, as well as job security. The next slide includes the results in a tabular form. The first table we see contains the Cronbach Alpha, and we got a value of 0.788, which is considered highly reliable. A second table talks about correlation between various metrics using Pearson correlation factor. We observe that there is a strong positive 
co- correlation between coping and WHO 5, which corresponds to mental health. Uh, there is also a strong negative co- correlation between WHO 5 and K6, which stands for psychological distress. Also coming to the three main important factors, we observe that there is a positive correlation between WHO 5, that is mental health and work-life balance, and negative correlations between mental health and financial strain, as well as job insecurity. So observing the results of, uh, after observing the results of the correlation, we proceeded to carry out regression analysis to uh, to investigate how well our metrics can predict the other factors. So for example, uh, a model one says that coping uh, is an effective pre- predictor of uh, mental well-being as well as coping and Q5, that is mental health, are effective predictors of work-life balance and so on and so forth. So uh, when we talk about our inferences, there are four key inferences uh, which are derived from a hypothesis of the study. The first being job security and coping abilities significantly predicted the level of mental well-being in an individual. Coping and mental well-being were also significant predictors of work-life balance, financial strain and job security were able to predict uh, positively the psychological distress and coping ability was higher among employees because of the initiatives work uh, organizers started taking to uh, improve mental well-being of their employees. I request Dr. Day to uh, please continue the presentation. Thanks, Neha. Uh, These are certain uh, limitations and suggestions for further study uh, which can be carried out based on whatever work we have done. The sample size was 149, which possibly can be increased and uh, thereby have a wider demographic. Also, we can carry out a survey uh, with individuals who do not have organization support. Here we saw that many of the sample uh, uh, responses where the organization support was very high. Then, uh, in the same manner, if we have more parameters which can be included to better understand the state of mental health. These are a few suggestions which can be done for further study. But in terms of conclusion, uh, in terms of what has been the outcome of the study, First and foremost, we definitely saw that there is a significant lifestyle change for employees as a result of COVID-19, as a result of this lockdown. There has been changes in the work-life balance of uh, people. There has been increase in stress due to financial strain and job insecurity. Uh, However, we have seen that organizations have taken a lot of initiatives uh, to educate employee and improve their mental well-being, such as, you know, they do yoga and exercise session, informal catch-up, trainings, etc., etc. Uh, this has been a, a, a small attempt for us to see how COVID-19 has impacted the mental health of employees and what organizations are doing. To read our paper, and uh, we have used uh, several references uh, for writing this particular paper. I hope this uh, presentation was... Uh, uh, useful and meaningful to you. Thank you so much. Namaskar. I am Dr. Sudhir Kumar, Astro Professor and HOD in Pulse Science in SSU College, Hapur, UP. COVID-19 Antarashti E-Conference Ke Aurek Mandal Ke Sabhi Sammanit Padadikari वह सदस्य गणों को सबसे पहले बहुत बहुत सारा साधुवाद कि आपने वर्तमान विश्वव्यापी ज्वलन समस्या का एक अच्छी कॉन्फ्रेंस के लिए चुनाव किया एंड आई एम टू मच थैंकफुल टू डॉक्टर रविधर पवार हु गिवन मी ए लिटिल चांस टू से समथिंग एट रिलेवेंट टॉपिक मैं कॉन्फ्रेंस के सबटाइटल फ्यूचर ऑफ वर्क सिस्टम आफ्टर कोविड 19 पर बात करूंगा जैसा कि विदित ही है कि आजकल कोरोना बीमारी ने न केवल पूरे दुनिया को हिलाकर रख दिया है बल्कि दुनिया की अर्थव्यवस्था को भी तहस-नहस कर दिया है अब यह भी स्पष्ट हो गया है कि इतनी जल्दी कोरोना जाने वाला नहीं है भारत जैसे देश ने भी 24 मार्च से लेकर के 4 जून तक लॉकडाउन के 1 2 3 4 फेजेस को कंटिन्यू रखा सरकार को उम्मीद थी कि 
इस इस पीरियड में कोरोना की चैन टूट जाएगी लेकिन चार लॉकडाउन के बाद भी सरकार को समझ में आ गया कि जिंदगी को इसके साथ ही चलाना है मैं यहाँ पर इस चीज को स्पष्ट करना चाहूंगा कि कोरोना व कोविड 19 के अंतर को समझना आवश्यक है कोरोना बेसिकली एक वायरस है जैसे कि अन्य वायरस हैं सार्स है मर्स है जो हमारे रेस्पायरेटरी सिस्टम पर अटैक करते हैं वैसे ही कोरोना भी हमारे रेस्पायरेटरी सिस्टम पर अटैक करता है और इस वायरस के द्वारा जो बीमारी होती है उसे हम कोविड 19 के नाम से जानते हैं जिसे आज डब्ल्यू एच ओ के द्वारा पेंडेमिक डिक्लेयर किया जा चुका है अब हमें यह जानना है कि जब तक तो कोई वैक्सीन नहीं आती तब तक जो है जीवन हमें किस प्रकार से चलाना है अर्थात आफ्टर कोविड 19 जीवन किस प्रकार चलेगा हमें कुछ ऐसी बातों का ध्यान रखना होगा जिससे कि हम अपने काम को भी कंटिन्यू कर सकें और उसके साथ साथ हम स्वयं को भी सुरक्षित कर पाए सबसे पहले मास्क अब हमारी जिंदगी का परमानेंट हिस्सा रहेगा जैसा कि हम सभी जानते हैं इस वायरस को अपना कोनवा बढ़ाने के लिए लिविंग ह्यूमन सेल की जरूरत पड़ती है जो कि ड्रोपलेट्स या कॉन्टेक्ट में आने से फैलता है अर्थात हम कह सकते हैं कि ये एक कॉन्टेजियस डिजीज है जो टच के माध्यम से फैलती है अर्थात हमें दूसरे व्यक्ति की जो कफ ड्रोपलेट्स हैं उनको अपने पास आने से हम रोक सकते हैं उसमें मास्क हमारे लिए बहुत बड़ी भूमिका निभा सकता है एक सहायक के रूप में कार्य कर सकता है इसी तरह सामाजिक दूरी के साथ साथ हाथ धोने की आदत डालनी पड़ेगी जब भी किसी चीज को छुए तो उसके बाद 20 सेकंड तक हमें जो है अपने हाथों को ठीक से धोना चाहिए जल्द जल्दी एक निश्चित अंतराल पर हमें हाथों को धोने की एक आदत बनानी पड़ेगी जहाँ तक संभव हो भीड़ में जाने से बचें जहाँ पर हाथ धोना संभव ना हो वहाँ पर ठीक से हाथों को सैनिटाइज करते रहें रेगुलर रेगुलर तीस मिनट से लेकर साठ मिनट तक फिजिकल एक्सरसाइज या योगा करने की आदत डालें कोल्ड ड्रिंक या कोल्ड आइटम्स से जहाँ तक संभव हो हमें बचना चाहिए हॉट ड्रिंक या गर्म पदार्थ जैसे आपका चाय है कॉफी है गर्म दूध है इन्हें जो है दिन में तीन चार बार हमें पीते रहना चाहिए इसी तरीके से लौंग है इलायची है तुलसी है जो हमारे घरेलू जो है चीजें हैं समय पहले से इस्तेमाल हम करते आए हैं उनका एक काढ़ा बना करके हमें पीते रहना चाहिए यहाँ पर यह उल्लेख करना भी प्रासंगिक होगा कि सरकार अपनी मैक्सिमम जिम्मेदारी का निर्वहन कर चुकी है अब सब कुछ सरकार के बूते नहीं छोड़ा जा सकता है जिंदगी हमारी है हमें स्वयं को स्वस्थ रखना होगा क्योंकि हम सब जानते हैं कि जान है तो जहान है इसी फार्मूले को ध्यान में रख करके अब हमें आगे बढ़ना होगा धन्यवाद डॉक्टर अंकुश लिंबाजी मोरे असोसिएट प्रोफेसर डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ इकोनॉमिक्स सोनबाबंद कॉलेज शाहपुर डिस्ट्रिक्ट ठाणे महाराष्ट्र गोंडवाना युनिवर्सिटी गड़चिरोली महाराष्ट्र इंडिया महिला महाविद्यालय अमरावती डिस्ट्रिक्ट अमरावती एंड चिंतामणि कॉलेज ऑफ कॉमर्स डिस्ट्रिक्ट चंद्रपुर 
joint day organized on two days interdisciplinary international e-commerce on impact of covid-19 on various areas of global economy science and humanities 24 and 25 june 2020 and present paper current scenario covid-19 impact on indian economy various sector i state the various sector in indian economy agriculture sector is increase the gdp 51 and 1.5 percent and industrial sector decrease the gdp minus 3 percent and service sector gdp in percent more than 2 percent all indian economies various sector impact of covid 19 is very bad impact as well as decrease the gdp growth service sector is decrease and loss of unemployment in market call center tourism hotel restaurant transport all sector impact of the very bad experience secondly industrial sectors in a full lockdown as well as virtual 10% open the lockdown and few industries run by and most of all industries the skilled labor and unskilled labor migrate to native paris is the very very bad problem of industrial sector third agriculture sector in future favorable monsoon rain in india to increase all kharif kharif variety of almost of increase the indian agricultural gdp growth gdp contribution all sectors very badly suffer in current situation indian government indian government economic policy rbi rbi credit policy banking sector all service sector and stock market is very bad impact of the covid 19 a short travel transport income expenditure which are employees labor agriculture and farms real estate and property money and banking health and medicines marketing and field work education and training wholesale and retail market all sectors in suffer before covid after covid 
one year, a one economic year, India's growth rate, not a boom in a slowdown, constant, as well as the U shaped, V shaped, U shaped. There are three safe Indian government policy, economic policy is mold and favorable decision and as well as implementation of effective all sectors. There are India's growth rate, you say. Not time to time decision, don't implementation time to time, not feedback, not review. Step by step, long run, long, short run and long run, review and action and correction, but does not India's growth rate save you, but also careless, no decision, no implementation, no review, no action, no action plan, there is a India's growth rate is as well as future present government policy, RPA policy, international linkage and SARC countries and also in favorable in Indian policy, Indian nature and people cooperate the government policy decision implementation there is a India's GDP is grow and as well as v -shaped. for future government decision very important role of after COVID-19 COVID God bless you, Indian economy, people, world, and Indian growth rate. Thank you. Greetings to all. I am Anahita Lankasa, Assistant Professor from the Department of English, Guwahati University. And the title of my paper is From Paperbacks to EPUBs, Digital Pedagogy in the Time of COVID-19. When the World Health Organization declared the novel coronavirus disease as a pandemic on 30 January 2020, the world was in a state of panic. Pretty soon the disease spread far and wide, infecting one country after another, leading to deaths in rising numbers and toppling the economy of the world. Immediately affected was also the education sector. Schools, colleges and universities being places of mass congregation had to close down. Education is important, but with lives at stake, the quickest solution all educators felt was to go online and continue with instructing the young minds. For a large number of teachers, transitioning to web-based teaching learning processes is more than complicated. Formerly, online tools and techniques were options most teachers could do without, for instance, those teaching language and literature. They belong to the humanities section after all. The human connection is more essential to their instructions rather than computerized procedures. Many of the faculty members are reluctant to take up digital tools in lieu of the art they perfected so well and are struggling with all the apps and e-tools. It's definitely going to be a challenge for them to transition from concrete classrooms to virtual ones with EPUBs and PDFs replacing paperbacks and hard copies. The entire structure of a tangible organization the campus grounds and classrooms foster an environment for enthusiastic teaching learning process. It is doubtful that the same scenario can be effectively achieved in a digital sphere. However, in place of face-to-face -face classes, there can be audio-visual conferencing. Various apps are available for that. To those unaccustomed to such tools, it will take some trials, but with practice, they should become comfortable. 
With the technical complexities out of the way, the focus should then be on the approach towards the students. The old schedules having been dismantled, the modified pedagogic process has been divided primarily into synchronous and asynchronous routines to meet with the irregular timings of the students. However, uh, with the personality of the well-versed teacher who could stir the emotions of the audience have the same weight on a cyber platform. Now consider a country like India where nationwide digitalizing programs have been initiated, but it is still in its nascent stage in the far flung corners. The need and yearning for education compel young students from across the rural states to move around difficult terrains to reach their places of learning. The educators go through similar lengths to impart their knowledge to these kids. With the onslaught of COVID-19, remote learning has been enforced, leaving these simple people digitally inadequate and helpless. Another disadvantage that should be considered is that of cybersecurity. It doesn't require a skilled hacker to breach firewalls and unprotected sites. This could lead to a number of hazards as the layman and technically challenged people risk compromising their personal information on an open virtual domain. Now, what would be the post COVID milieu in the educational stratum? There should be emphasis on mental health. Both teachers as well as students need to understand that normal days belong to a bygone epoch. Many students cannot cope with the situation as rapidly as situation may demand of them. They should seek counseling or other means of help to assuage their tensions and promote emotional agility and mental well-being. Now training of instructors. Hastening into online teaching without a proper framework is far from a good strategy. Neither the teachers nor the students have been prepared for such unprecedented circumstances. As required of them, the educators may try to reach online uh, through online um, available means, but the students are growing wary of situation and all the more passive. They will not respond as earnestly as expected unless the teachers learn at first how to tackle being creative online. Faculty and teaching assistants have to be trained for this. They can take up online courses, learn from YouTube videos, read many of the e-resources on online teaching and of course through webinars and virtual conferences. Now improving connectivity. The biggest challenge is improving network connectivity and ensuring that both teachers and learners have the requisite electronic devices, mobile phones, tablets, and desktops, laptops. Hard copies would have to be replaced by PDFs, eBooks, or Kindle. Most of these electronic formats are available for free or for lesser prices. Digital libraries are accessible to institutions and registered students in a few clicks. So internet facility is a prerequisite, otherwise a huge barrier will continue to turn all the efforts of the academia futile. ICT and app proficiency. The teachers should develop the interest to learn usage of ICT tools and various teaching applications which are readily accessible. They should hone their digital skills as nowadays being tech illiterate is a liability. The chalk and talk formula might be favored by many professors, but at the same time, they must incorporate ICT devices into their teaching techniques. Students also need to develop their e-learning quality and make use of available online materials. Now, redesigning the curricula. The post-pandemic pedagogy will necessitate the remodeling of the existing academic curricula. There has to be scope for including the differently abled learners in this revised online platform. Syllabi will have to include multimodal means of instruction and learning. Stakeholders should collaborate and organize and structure hybrid or similarly blended teaching learning online courses. Now, there are many more struggles which can be overcome and technically worked out if diligent minds come together, discuss, and will it into practicality. With this, I would like to conclude my paper. Thank you. Myself, Dr. Mohammed Mohazam Nazri, Assistant Professor, Faculty of Commerce, Green City College, Jamshadpur. Today, I am going to presenting a paper on topic 
COVID-19 and its impact on banking sector. Coronavirus COVID-19 is an infectious respiratory disease caused by a macrovirus named coronavirus because of its corona-like shape under the under a under a microscope it is one of the greatest global challenges lead after second world war which is affecting daily delineates world health and economic calamity in india economy has been experiencing significant slow down on account of covid-19 investment and consumption demand has been languishing the new coronavirus epidemic presented fresh challenges for the indian economy now causing severe disruptive impact on both demand and supply side elements which is which has the potential to drain india's growth story covid-19 has already had a significant impact on global financial market markets including india and its way and its and it may have accounting and reporting implications for many entities a number of stimulus measures have been taken to bring back the economy on a growth path the reserve bank of india has been made in this the reserve bank of india has taken sorry the reserve bank of india has taken certain measures to give some relief to the lending institution hence an attempt has been made in this paper to analyze the major analyze the measures taken by rbi and its impact on indian banking sector i would like to discuss in my topic on credit risk assessment and liquidity credit risk assessment the rbi has given certain waivers to the borrowers which include more more premiums to pay principal and interest with relaxation on their classification as a non performing sector or a restructured assets this has been implemented to help borrower side over temporary financial financial difficulties however bank will have to identify and monitor the borrowers who are facing temporary and long term financial difficulties such borrowers will provision according accordingly due to due to the pandemic 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 due to the pandemic it might become to cumbersome or difficult to difficult for banks to determine the extent and adequacy of collateral available with them and subsequent provisioning they may additional disclosures required in the financial statements and the computation of capital adequacy for covid-19 banks would therefore be required to maintain robust risk management functions and track their borrowers individually to determine and segregate the permanent impact from the temporary impact and make it make pro and make appropriate provision now 
On the other hand, when we see liquidity, given the, situ given the situation of the lockdown in the country, the difficulty, the, the defaults, sorry, the defaults may increase sustain, substantially as many companies would have lost revenue for a long time and increase in default is likely to is likely is likely to cause issue in liquidity and capital adequacy. However, the RBI has advised certain measures to provide liquidity to all lending when all lending institutions such as the requirement of minimum daily daily cash reserve ratio balance maintenance have been reduced from 90 to 80 percent under the margin stand and standing facility rbi has permitted banks to borrow overnight at their direction by dipping up to two percent into uh, into the statutory liquidity ratio policy repo rate has also been reduced under the la from 5.5 percent to 4.4 percent a very warm good afternoon to one and all i am ananda Langtasa, assistant professor from the department of english arivita pit college Guwahati. at the outset i would like to express my deep appreciation to the organizers for organizing this enriching webinar and i would also like to extend my deep gratitude for giving me this opportunity since we have very limited time for presentation i shall now jump straight to my paper the title of my paper is Quantary to Mastery, Benefits of Teaching Literature in Virtual Platform During COVID-19 Pandemic. I would like to begin by quoting the great physicist Albert Einstein, who famously said, in the midst of every crisis lies great opportunity. Due to the COVID-19 pandemic, the educational institutions in India and in many other countries were closed as a measure to avert possible contagion. And we, the educators found ourselves in the middle of what can be termed as pedagogical crisis. In order to ensure academic continuity without any form of disruption as a stopgap solution, we resorted to teaching in digitally mediated platforms, extensively utilizing internet enabled technologies like Zoom, WhatsApp, Google Classroom, Google Meet and the like. This sudden digital shift from physical classroom to virtual classroom was not a seamless transition for many reason because of the existing digital divide, socioeconomic and gender disparity. Um, but most importantly, because uh, many of us who were more accustomed to traditional face-to-face -face teaching found ourselves inept and lacking proficiency. Those already associated with distance education and those who practice e-learning were completely in a better position. Majority of us were faced with an unprecedented challenge, but it was an opportunity in disguise. It was an opportunity to acquaint ourselves with interactive online tools and master their smooth operation and navigation. It gave us an opportunity to boost our existing teaching practices with interesting and innovative integrations making teaching and learning process all the more engaging and effective. So the pedagogical crisis provided us a wonderful learning opportunity. As the great writer Tagore famously stated, a teacher can never truly teach unless he is still learning himself. A lamp can never light another lamp unless it continues to burn its own flame. The digital shift opened many doors of numerous advantages. Benefits of teaching in virtual platforms are many, like feasibility of visual demonstration, accessibility to e-resources, flexibility of class schedule, even possibility of 24-7 learning. Teaching in virtual platforms facilitates a synchronous learning environment and collaborative learning environment. In this paper, I will mainly focus on the positive impact of such environment and their importance in teaching literature. To truly appreciate uh, any prose or poetry in literature requires critical thinking, research, and discussion. In a physical classroom with fixed time schedule, we find it is usually the extrovert students who partake in class discussions and post queries, the shy and introvert students mostly remain aloof. But in a virtual classroom, the latter kind of students find a comfortable platform and they too actively participate and engage in discussions. 
For instance, in any virtual platform of choice, be it Google Classroom or simply WhatsApp, a teacher can share a video lecture or reading material and assign the students to either post video query or simply comment. Even the shyest of the students enjoy sharing video queries and comments. We are all home because of the pandemic, but we do not know if every home is conducive to learning. Adopting asynchronous mode of learning becomes vitally important in this scenario. So a student can play and replay the video, read and reread the material when he can and as many times as he want till he comprehends and grasps the concepts meant to be understood. No two students are alike. They, are, they all learn at their own pace. Asynchronous learning personalizes the learning experience. We can do so much more than simply take online classes in virtual platforms like Zoom. So if you are teaching Anita Desai in custody, you can screen the Merchant Ivory film adaptation of the novel in Zoom and later have a lively discussion with the students on not just the thematic concerns or characterization, but also on the nuances of cinematography and film adaptation. Screening movie in virtual platform is more convenient and time efficient than physical screen. After scheduling date and time, you can simply mail join meeting link to students and they can enjoy a stimulating learning experience. The teacher, of course, can always share the movie link in other virtual media. So some students who can't watch on the scheduled date can watch them when it is convenient. Using Google Meet or Zoom, uh, we can hold webinars, which is a research-oriented approach to teaching any literary text or concepts. It encourages self-study, stimulates critical and creative thinking. It makes the students more motivated and proactive towards learning. Students can be assigned to make either a group presentation or individual presentation on any literary text, say Vijay Tendulkar's controversial play, Kanyadan. Even if it is a group presentation, there should be equal distribution of workloads so that each member has a topic to work on, uh, which would be later compiled together. They can make a PowerPoint presentation or just video presentation on the various issues and concerns pertaining to the play and analyze the play from different perspectives. Students mostly prefer PowerPoint presentation and it is more convenient and hassle-free to do so in virtual platforms. Virtual teaching encourages collaborative learning and makes it more fun and stimulating. Few other ways of encouraging collaborative learning using online tools include assigning students to make an animated video of any select play or fiction using Animoto, to write blogs or create websites on any literary concepts or figures by creating account in WordPress, to annotate a poem by creating an account in Genius, to add or edit contents through wikis. Through these assignments, the students are not only learning their prescribed literary text, but also gaining knowledge about research, citation, editing, digital publishing, all the while improving their writing skills, speaking skills, and digital skills. These virtual platforms and online tools make teaching and learning literature more interactive, collaborative, and productive. Teaching literature broadens the student's worldview, uh, and doing so in virtual platforms practically equips them and prepares them for future. In conclusion, I would like to say that teaching through digital means complements traditional teaching. As the renowned educational reformer John Dewey remarked, if we teach today's students as we taught yesterday, we rob them of tomorrow. We are living in a digital age, so it is imperative that we keep ourselves informed about the latest digital innovations and adapt to the changing technology. Judicious use of digital platforms and effective integration of interactive online tools to our existing teaching practice not only enhances the students' learning experience, but also improves and enriches their communication skills and digital skills, preparing them for future vocations in this technology-driven knowledge society. Thank you. My name is Pintu Manmaji, Assistant Professor and HOD, Department of Education, Sorsuna College, Kolkata, India. My topic is attitude towards COVID-19 among college teachers, college, Kolkata, and online survey. The current pandemic is not only witnessing affecting the health of the citizens in the country, but at the same time in hindering various segment of the country too. From the teacher's viewpoint, the most immediate problem was observed is the temporary essence 
of face-to-face -face classes, which has left students perplexed in the completely new situation without any clear clarity, clarity as to when normalcy is achieved. In the present study, an attempt has been made to investigate the attitude towards COVID-19 of undergraduate college teachers. Objective of the study, two objectives. One, to assess the level of attitude about COVID-19. Second, to assess the effect of stream and gender on attitude about COVID-19. Methodology of the study, the design of the study based on online survey, where the questionnaire are used to collect data and to analyze the quantitatively. The sample will be drawn stratified randomly from the population. The subject was chosen from the college teachers and sample number of sample 160 belonging to three different streams arts, science, and commerce, and both male and female. Instrument, a 20 item attitude towards COVID-19 scale was used to measure the teacher's attitude toward COVID-19. There are 21 statements with five alternatives. I completely agree, I agree, I am undecided, I disagree, and I completely disagree for negatives statement the scoring procedure was completely reversed this online questionnaire vetted by expert in measures and research was used the instrument of data collection and analyzed by employing quantitatively research approach item related to attitude toward covid 19 such as do you believe that working from home can help control covid 19 and do you think COVID-19 can cause massive fatality in what? Result and discussion. Table 1, descriptive statistics concerning distribution of attitude towards COVID-19. The descriptive statistics in Table 1 for attitude towards COVID-19, the score of main median mode shows an average performance ranging 81.2. In case of the attitude towards human rights, the score are more clustered. It is evident that score the variable asymptotically distributed with the score negatively skewed. Table 2 means a deviation of attitude towards COVID-19 regarding gender and state. Table shows that attitude towards COVID-19 score are and female teachers is higher than male science commerce teachers. Table number three shows that there is no significant difference attitude towards COVID-19 score in the two groups, namely stream and gender. Conclusion, the arts and female teachers are more concerned with the attitude towards COVID-19 as quite a number of researchers have reported to it through finding of of mixed nature. In this study, also female teacher respondents have disclosed their concern about subsequent positive attitude towards COVID-19 more than their female teacher counterparts. The research study is significant and has implication for the policy makers include the policy perspectives as the study will provide necessary input regarding essential government policy that need to be undertaken to encourage attitude towards COVID-19. The recommendation for well, teachers should be encouraged to participate in committees on COVID-19 project program policies. Attitude of college teachers towards COVID-19 in human development and in relation to the protection of the society must be recognized and sustained. Limitation of the study, limitation of the study, the small size of the sample, a sample from larger group, including there are other teachers and administrators who have given a broader perspective. The qualitative study of the research has not been included due to the fewity of time. It is required to undertaking the relationship between the other variable in depth. Thank you.
for giving me a patient hearing. Any queries, please mail us. Good morning, everyone. Uh, I'm Shubhanshi Goyal from Amity University, Noida, and I'm pursuing Masters in English Literature. And my research topic is impact of COVID-19 on skills and abilities. I have deeply speculated on this topic, and here I come, and I want to share it with you all. So when we come on the topic of skills and abilities, and as we all know that each and every individual on this earth possess some skill and ability, and all are distinctive from the other person. Um, but when not put into practical use, we tend to lose those skills and abilities because they require regular practice and uh, they have to be used into uh, they have to be used into practical terms. Otherwise, we tend to uh, we tend to degrade their quality and we tend to lose our skills and abilities. So even I have speculated my life in this uh, in these months of uh, this pandemic, and I found that uh, the skills and abilities which I possessed a few months back, I I'm lacking in them. You know, I'm not able to work with full efficiency because I'm lacking the resources. I'm lacking money to uh, to use them or to put them into practical use. So, uh, I think this problem is being faced by each and every individual, be it a small kid, be it any uh, adolescent person, or be it an, any adult person. So everyone is facing the same problem because starting right from a younger age to this age, every single person is, uh, has some or the other skill. So when we start from uh, right from the small kids, which parents used to take them to school before this pandemic had arrived. So as we can remember that uh, their teachers had full control over them. They used to teach them good manners, new norms, policies, and um, you know new, new forms of living and you know adapting into into working environment and being collaborative with their. Um, with their uh, teammates and with their friends in the class. So now all this is lacking. Children don't know what sort of environment is required to study. Even if their parents make them sit inside a room and they make them study, they are not able to study with their full efficiency because that environment is lacking, that ambience is lacking, then ultimately, you know, um, uh, they, they're lacking that enthusiasm, that valor with which they used to study before. So. Uh, this was the case which we have seen in case of kids. They are, they are getting dull. And as we all know that uh, all work and no play makes a dull boy. So that is what is happening with our kids. And when we come to a little uh, elder age or you may say adolescent people, then we can say they are just longing to go out and, you know, uh, hang around with your friends to refresh themselves but they are unable to do so and because of the because of this they are unable to get refreshed so they are not able to work from their home uh, be any assignments are given so actually all we can see is we are not able to put in our heart and uh, we we are just copying assignments from here and there we holding a degree we are just, uh, you know, we are not giving a hundred percent and just making assignment for the sake of making and we are not gaining anything from it. So uh, ultimately, you know, our power to think, our ability to think and create thoughts and thus uh, contribute to creativity has reduced to a large level because we are losing in us skills now uh, because we are not getting that perfect ambience, that environment in which we used to work earlier. Now when coming to a little broader perspective of job doing people, then we can say that these job people, uh, job doing people are facing enormous amount of problems in their lives because as uh, government has ordered work from home and they can't physically go to their working places and they have to uh, relate themselves on online modes. So uh, it's very difficult to actually sit in front of mobile screens and laptop screens for such long hours and then talk, 
and then uh, continuously collaborate with your teammates, with your bosses, and with your professors and uh, every other uh, person belonging to their respective jobs. So this is one of the difficult tasks. So it, it is in a way a great loss to their, uh, you know, uh, it can even lead to mental sickness because they are not able to take out time for themselves. They are not able to go out and have a walk. So uh, the things which would they would have otherwise utilized with their skills and abilities, so everything is lacking in that. So uh, these were the uh, these were the routines which I told you about the kids and then the adolescent people who were going to colleges and then we came to the job uh, doing people. So these were the three phases of individuals which I have discussed and how uh, they are facing in uh, putting their skills and abilities into practical use. However. Uh, uh, I have taken, I have that the past has truly passed and that many of the ways leaders think about and run their businesses will not go back to normal and that is a good thing. The pandemic has forced firms to adopt more productive ways of operating and accelerate productivity programs already in motion. So uh, uh, the things which I told in the starting were how we are losing our skills and abilities and how they are being deeply affected. Similarly, one more uh, uh, one more advantage apart from all the bad effects, the advantage which we can see is people are coming up with their new productive ways, new inventions, and new innovations up with new inventions. They're using their creativity. So in a way, new skills are coming up, which people might have not realized within themselves because you know, situations ultimately force us to create something new to fight for our own living. So uh, this is one benefit that we can see in present pandemic that new innovations, new uh, inventions are coming and people are coming up with new skills and abilities uh, which which may prove you creative and profitable in the longer run. So thank you. Thank you very much all to attend this online paper presentation session. I would like to thankful to all the delegates from various areas and I appreciate your whole patience that you have attended this live session from more than five hours, it is five hours, 36 minutes. So I would like to thankful to you all. If you have any problem regarding the certificates, it will not be issue. We will in touch with you totally till you will not get or satisfied with each and everything. Thank you very much. Those who have presented their certificates sorry, those who have presented their presentations will get separate certificate for the presentation. And we are reviewing your papers. Soon we are sending to the journals and we will communicate you the status soon. Thank you very much.